second. Okay, this is an audio test. Here we are, we are here. Hello, hello chat. Yo, I think we nailed that audio first time. Have we? Yeah. Again, okay, we'll see because almost every almost every song that I pick, in, even though I pick them at random, <laughs> it's too quiet. The first even one. though we pick them at random, it's always like, oh, this has a has a slow, quiet intro, and I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't I know think it's likely. Probably. How are we doing, early people? How are we doing? Frog was already here. I clocked that when I was doing setup. So is Kay. Frog and Kay are already here. Feel like I'm about to DM. Because <laughs> I've got my my DM folder out. I'm like, let's begin. I'm doing good, Kay. How are you, bud? Even though I've been talking to you on and off all day. I need to put my tunes on, huh? Let's just hit the music. Hey, if I just hit play on Spotify, what do we think is gonna stop playing? Kind of get the disco. What? <laughs> 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 it was a legitimate question, so I gave. It's you a very good guess. I gave but you I hit, I hit play. I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at what actually started playing. Oh no! What was it? King Mog! <laughs> it's got King Moogle Mog, of course. Oh, oh, I, oh god, let's see. Let's, let's probably hey, no. <laughs> let's hope this works, because I was so caught up with the fact that we were running late that I forgot to test the tablet. Oh, Jesus. Whoops, we're we good, normally do that good. with it's, 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 the The ratio is correct. Wonderful. Apparently, whenever it, it knows, whenever it knows that it has an update to install, it basically it makes itself not work. <laughs> yeah. As if to tell me, hey, you should go install this update. And I'm like, well, if you're so smart knowing there's an update, why don't you auto update? <laughs> <laughs> Do it on your own. If, <laughs> if we play Moogle Mog on stream, who would DMCA us first, do you think? Disney or Squeenix? Definitely Squeenix. <laughs> Definitely Squeenix. <laughs> <laughs> Who would, who would get there the quickest? <laughs> Tanking everyone's favourite leveling dungeon. Oh, Aurum. Tanking Aurum's real rough. Oof. Yeah. Or, or Zemail. Aurum or Zemail are both rough. Copper Bell. Oh. <laughs> That's fine, you can have a nap. <laughs> Snooze. Oh wait, no, you're tanking. No, you're the only one who can't have a nap. Oh, right. <laughs> Out to Twitch chat. Blue doesn't know what she's doing today, chat, so I do. <laughs> I know what I'm doing for that's, once. That's how the universe maintains its balance. Mm -hmm. Me and Blue have to <laughs> balance it out, otherwise, everything will fall to shit yeah. real quick. We can both not know. <laughs> Oh yeah, but we can't both go. No, no, because like, last I think last Otherwise, week neither of us knew what we were doing. <laughs> hmm? I think last week neither of us knew what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we, you had a set project, kind of. It, it kind of. It took me a while to get there because I eventually just made, yeah. Eventually, I just made a list of OCs and then rolled the dice. <laughs> I think I actually did nothing last week. <laughs> you you en you ended up doing nothing until I was like, how about you just do toy house and you did that toy instead. House, yeah. Don't run away from the hyperfixation. X, X, X. X, X, X. Speaking of, chat, I'm doing D&D maps this week. I'm doing a different part than I normally do on stream. Normally on, on stream I'm doing digitizing. Um, but I have so many maps to make <laughs> that I haven't designed half of them yet. So I'm actually doing map drawing this week. Which means you'll see none of it because it will all be here. On this sweet, sweet paper. I think my proudest map-making moment was one of the homebrew dungeons I did for the girls. 
where it was it was a story story plot point that a uh, dragon that they were chasing, which I wish I would point out was a man who had been forcefully transformed into a dragon, because <laughs> my homebrew campaign is wild. Uh, he had gotten he had gotten shot by a cannon and literally crash landed. And thus, my favourite part of the entire dungeon was when I went away and calculated how big of a crater he would leave when he crashed. <laughs> when I was like, well, this is the approximate mass and size of the type of dragon that he is. And this is the speed he was going, but he was falling, so he was probably at terminal velocity at this point. So when he hit the ground, how long was the furrow that he left? And I calculated how big it was. <laughs> I love... You all in the oak car party very much. I will never go that far for you. <laughs> I will never love you that much. I'm sure my calculations weren't accurate, but they were close enough that I was content with them. But they existed. <laughs> they existed. They're on some paper in there, I think. On my, like, planning paper for the dungeon. Because so I was like, basically it was a pre-existing dungeon, and half of it was caved in from this dragon crash. So I was literally like, how much of this, dra this dungeon do I need to destroy? How big of a crash does he leave? <laughs> it was pretty fun. He took out three rooms oh, yeah. that just got obliterated and then came to land in a fourth, which just became known as his where he died, basically. <laughs> right. Because he didn't die when he landed, but the party found him and were like, this guy's a bad guy, but now we just kind of feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna like we're just gonna like put him out of his misery. Dude got forcefully transformed into a dragon and then shot out the sky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's rough to be fair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once again, I'm I'm, sc I'm looking through the the folders of maps I have made previously, and my naming conventions continue to astound me. Uh, Good boy fight. Good Is boy that fight. one? Good boy fight. I think that's the main room of the tree dungeon with the guard dregs. Very good boy. Is this a wall? This one's called? It's the temple map and also my personal hell, which previously featured on this very live stream. Tree extension. <laughs> this will do. I don't know. I, there's a, I definitely made this map before, I feel. Maybe I haven't. Um, uh, welcome to today's edition of which notebook did I put this in? I have a list somewhere. There it is. I can see it on the floor. Which one of these is going to be the most important to do first? Probably. I'm trying to put these in priority order <laughs> mentally based on how well I know you kids. <laughs> Hello! Give me two sec, guys. I'm gonna put these in the bin before they start to smell. Because Sherry! <laughs> Do it. I'm once again having to lean on my actual laptop itself, chat. So if you see it all pitch forward, you know why. I'm gonna try not to do that. Um. Yeah, how are we all? Shouldn't I, Jack? Yeah, I'm doing good, Lon. I went outside today. Heck yeah. First, well, 
I've, I've been outside on like walks, but I went outside with purpose uh, <laughs> for the first time in a while. I mean, going, going out for walks is the bit that I encourage. Yes, because I don't do enough. Um, I try to do it at least once a day, whether it's busy. Yeah. So occasionally I might, like miss, I might miss no one day a week if there's like bad rain or something. Absolutely, it doesn't look like the same distance, but apparently it is. Oh, it's because that's not the same distance. Hello, Des. Hello, hello. But yeah, I went to the store. Because my brother could not go, so I had to chime in to do to give a helping hand this week. Which means I have treats for myself while the stream. Oh, did you get the treats that we spoke about? I did, yes, because <laughs> I have no self-control, and yes. I had to give the receipt to my dad because I had the neighbor shopping on it, and he had to do it. He was like, "You sure this is charged correctly?" I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> "He's like, but this cost this much." I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> "Please don't question the bad choices I make with my own money." <laughs> with respect, never let me do the shopping again. <laughs> Look, I'm normally, I'm 99% of the time very responsible. I'm glad you can claim that. <laughs> One of us has to. <laughs> we can go. I spent money on Pokemon cards, which I opened on the weekend, and then just yesterday I bought more. <laughs> oh no. Hey, good to know. How? how oh, I hate. What? Yeah, yeah. I hate it. I hate it as well. I literally measured all this out and somehow it doesn't measure. <laughs> I just did it! I hate, I hate. This is why my D&D maps are never to scale. <laughs> and you know what? That trend is about to continue. I'm blessed in that I've never had to make a digital map for Roll20. Uh, I've only ever had to do them for the table because uh, the only Roll20 yeah. games I've run have been the pre-written ones. See, but, yeah. But when also, I... Like, I feel like as well, when you're running a, a table, you can use grid paper. Yeah. Well, what, what, I, do, what I do for my physical ones is I use layout paper, very thin, yeah. thin grid paper, and then I literally just put the paper over the grid map, and the grid map shows through, yeah. and then I draw it. And that's how I put it on the table. Yeah. I do like a... But you can also scale things then by being like, right, it's you know, however many feet, so it's going to be this many squares. Yeah, that's done. literally how I do it. Yeah. And then sometimes sometimes when the map is done, I go over the lines so that they're on the page, but most of the time I just have, like, a little mark to line it up. A little line yeah. mark, and then when I put it on the table, I just make sure those marks are aligned. Weigh it down, yeah. and it's good. Yes. Um, I can, I can vaguely do, like, okay, this is a small map, this is a medium map, this is a large map. But I don't know exactly how big anything's gonna be until it's in Roll20. <laughs> until I finish the map and I import it to Roll20 and I scale it up and I'm like, what size this thing's ended up being? Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, well, I want this to be a square, right? So like I can kind of eyeball it from that. But as we saw with the temple map, when I have a thing where I'm like, okay, this is a square, <laughs> suddenly space becomes very odd. <laughs> Might be worth getting yourself a little grid for when you do your sketches. Well, the thing is, if I if I have a grid, so if I did it onto a grid when I planned it out, mm. I've then got to take it into Photoshop, um, translate it from there, either putting the grid on it manually or putting some kind of grid texture over it, but that would also have to be scaled. And then from there, I would have to match that grid scale to Roll20. <laughs> <laughs> Which is three levels of grid translation that I just don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, at least the, the whole grid scaling thing in Roll20 isn't too hard because when you click, like, when you click scale to grid, it literally says select yeah. three squares and it all yeah. snap to it. It's not yeah. Too hard. I tend to find though that it makes it. It just like it, it suddenly doesn't fit the. Canvas. Yeah, because yeah, because it, it changes the grid square, but it doesn't change the canvas size. So once it's the correct, yeah, once it's got the correct uh, thing, the correct ratio and positioning, then I can go into the canvas size and change the size. Yeah, 
because the, the ratio is correct. Because the size of the yeah. canvas is based on the amount of squares. Yes. I um, have been fortunate in that I found a size of Roll20 thing where, like, if I fill it, that's about as big as I want a large map to be, mm -hmm. and then I can pair it back from that. See, I had the limitation of real life uh, literally being the yeah, size of the, t the table, so it's like a, yeah. like a small map when you, when we are working with in, you know uh, the actual inch grid of one inch is five foot, and it's like yeah. the size of the table. It's like oh, I've only got sort of about twenty five squares to work with, so this map can literally only be X amount of feet wide. Next. Which yeah. is with, I want to yeah. substitute pieces out. And... So when I when I was making. Uh, the, my dungeons, pretty much every room had to be an individual piece of paper. So, yep. back in the living room, if I pull out a dungeon scroll, it's literally a scroll of about 25 bits of paper that are all... It's like my Dragonhorn map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, literally, and like, what, the back the back corner of the page is numbered, and then in my yeah. DM's notes I have the full, full map, on a single layer yeah. of paper with everything numbered, a bit like how it appears in pre-written campaigns. Yes. And then, uh, and then I literally have to like follow the map as my players go through it, and it's like, okay, they've gone through the northern entrance of room two, so that leads to room four, yeah. where it's page number four. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. I haven't at the table. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. It's great at the table because you can do uh, the thing that you probably can't really do on roll twenty because of how roll twenty works, which is um, players have to track where they are because they can't see the entire dungeon. Whereas obviously roll twenty, you have the entire dungeon map and you reveal it so people can see yeah. it. So people can see it. Which I just sort of role play as, you know, somebody in the group has been writing it down. But at the table yeah. at the table, somebody actually has to physically write it down. Otherwise it'd be like, right, um where's the entrance? And it's like Yeah. Keep track, boyo. Yeah. You, you walk here, walk, ba walk back, and they're like, <laughs> you know, um, did we go through the left room or the right room? <laughs> and then it's how you're feeling as a DM is how much you yeah, help. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I suppose someone could make a survival check, maybe, because that's what yeah. survival checks are for. Or you can have a ranger. <laughs> or you could just, or have someone with keen mind, I guess. <laughs> Let's just have a ranger. Because rangers, yeah. rangers literally just have the thing, I cannot get lost. <laughs> yeah. So let's just have a ranger. Problem solved. <laughs> I think I've unintentionally uh, done a warm up right now. Because this is not a map I need to make, I've just started making shapes. <laughs> That's the way yeah, I'm just making shapes. Sorry, chat. I've gotten to really into talking about D&D oh, yeah. maps. Like, totally We're going to talk about D&D maps, but you're having good chat. <laughs> you're having a good conversation. Why do you guys are talking? Because I've like, literally zoned out on chat for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I haven't had a point yet, as you all know, for, for chat, um, where I've needed to be like, right, right, this is going over a couple maps, but I'm aware that it might happen. And I don't know how that's going to go in Roll20 because obviously the way Roll20 works but we'll see it's only because the only thing I'm worried about is initiative I think the initiative table is tied to map isn't it? I think it might be Actually, yeah no, no, I, think I don't think I seem it is because sometimes we go into new combat and like the old initiative is still on map there. Is there yeah the, the old, old initiative, initiative is still on the table so it's no I don't think it is yeah, it could be done. It could be done. Yeah, because when I put you on new maps, I always have the old initiative up because I never fucking clear it, do I? So I, I, suppose you, I suppose you could do, you know, do it the way I did, where each page is like a room, but that would be so much more work. Oh my god, can you imagine what my roll 20 thing would look like? That's far too much work. That's that's something that kind of only really is at a table. Yeah. That's far too much work for both the DM and the players, but maybe the DM. Yeah. Yeah. God knows. I don't like making more work for myself. <laughs> what am I doing right now? I need to remember that it's my turn to run this 
week, so I will need to make plans as well. Because I now have I haven't, I haven't stopped making plans this week, I feel. <laughs> well, I have got it easy for myself because I'm doing a pre-written. I now have to write somebody out, which is not uh, easy. Oh. Nope. Sorry if you see me reaching behind me like this, chat. That's where my paper is. that like, and this is true for a lot of the maps I make, mentally I have it all done. Actually translating it to a physical space hmm. is very difficult for me. <laughs> because often I have like general shapes and spaces in mind, but not how they connect. Hmm. Like making it into a building that makes sense is often pretty tough. I get that, because the only two dungeons that I've made have both been organic. So the yeah. rooms have been like clearings. You know, and yeah. like, oh, the, the edges of this are trees and stuff that are too dense for you to walk through, etc, etc. Yeah. The edge of this is a many times. Yeah. The edge of this is a cliff, the edge of this is, you know, boulders or whatever. So the shapes are always organic, the rooms are round, the corners are round. I've never made a dungeon that is a building, because I, I, I do struggle with rooms yeah. and visualising that, of like, how See, that work. Yeah, I can manage a dungeon that's underground. As Blue knows, many of my dungeons are underground, but I also like to make things hard for myself because a couple of my dungeons have been forts or mansions. <laughs> and like, not only do they have to have an interior that's interesting to go through, but externally they need to make sense as a shape. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm sure none of us would really say much if it did. No, none of you would ever notice, but I would know, <laughs> and that's unacceptable to me. Um, so for a lot of these places, I have, I know what they look like from the outside, and I know how their interior works, and sometimes those are not the same. Which is normally why, like when I did Dragonhorn, and uh, the Thorsten Estate, which was one of the dungeons I ran, uh, Thorsten Estate, and another one. Uh, oh, I kind of got away with it with, um, fucking uh, Anatole's house. The Shelter Estate. Shelter Estate, I got away with it because most of it was underground. Hmm. But, um, yeah, Thorsten Manor and Dragonhorn, I both did the exterior shape and then filled in from the inside. Yeah. The same way I do Sims houses. <laughs> Spook's pretty it's good tough. at that, that kind of stuff because when he helped me when Spook I was making. Spook seems like he has the brain for that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, it's because very much in his sort of brain. Because when I first was first making dungeons, I was like, I don't even know where to start, and he sort of yeah. Like, helped what do you put in them? Yeah, he basically sort of helped me with that. Where he was like, you know, think about function, and I was like, but it's a, it's a forest, and mm -hmm. like, yeah, mm -hmm. but there's still going to be a function. You know, you have a you yep. have an enemy at the end, and it's like, you know, what do they do? So he helped me break down, like, okay, so there's a bad guy that lives in this dungeon and has made it their home and it's like okay so because they've sort of taken over the dungeon of their home what rooms do they have so it's like okay well they have the room where they sleep the room where they store all their yeah. stuff their research room uh their experimenting room uh and you know it's like, it's like do they have yeah. any minions i was like yes they made their own minions and he was like cool so they need a room where they, they need a space where that happens they need a space where they make the minions but they need a space where the minions stay where the minions yeah. live they need an armory assuming they're armed and things like that yes and I was like, oh, this is so much easier now that I've thought about this. Yeah. I always, when I'm working on dungeons, I guess this is this is what the stream is now, but it's okay. Um, when I'm working on dungeons, I generally start with story. It's going to be a good one that I can talk about. Probably, probably Thorsten is probably, uh, Sholto is probably a good one. Yes. Um, so with the Sholto estate, I was like, well, this the like actual man manners and ruins, so I'm just dealing with what's underneath it. Um, and my concept for it literally was uh, there was a crazy guy, a, <laughs> a crazy uh, wizard obsessed with building uh, a device for immortality, <laughs> and it was under his house. 
so then you get a whole bunch of stuff where's the way in why has it survived um why has no one found it <laughs> and if you're trying to keep something in what do you then set up and if it was where he worked okay so that from there i need somewhere where he stays when he's down here mm. uh a place he did, does the research and the experimentation, probably a place where they store, and then it went back. Yeah. See, um, realizing that is so fun because, as many people here probably know, because of how much I go on about it, I freaking love environmental storytelling in games. So I, being able to then make it, too. yeah, being able to make it yourself, of realizing like, oh, so this is the room where he keeps his pet. So yeah. I will just when I describe the room, I need to make these points clear of like, oh, there's claw marks on on the walls. There's yeah. a, a you know a clear nest in the thing in the corner and things like that. There's bones that are chewed, and it's like yeah. you know the the cre there's no creature in the room, but it's immediately apparent of something sleeps here. Something lives here. Something yeah. Something sleeps here because this is clearly a bed and it brings stuff back. And then you end up doing stuff you don't even mean to do because then you're like, well, does the person who made this creature care about it? Yeah. And then from there you decide, well, you know, how you would, you know, is there stuff in here? Is there like enrichment in here or is there really not? You yep. know, Das calling me out for being Eldritch again. <laughs> being, being Eldritch on main. <laughs> Take a sip, babes. God, do I even have water? Yeah, I do. Better I have, have four water. Different, I have four different drinks up there. Y'all better have water. Yeah, no, I love making dungeons. Dungeons are really hard, but I really love making dungeons. Um, it can take me a while to get going, but once I'm in the headspace, they can be quite fun. Yeah. It's been a long time since I made one. And I don't kind of, I've only really made two. Oh god, I don't want to think about how many I've made now. Because my dungeons, I don't know if you would agree with this or not, Oakheart dungeons are not typical dungeons all the time. Yeah, I would agree with that. They do tend to be different. <laughs> but, well, I like that. <laughs> yeah, we, okay, good. We, we, we like uh, the different things. But they, they, cause yeah, they, cause they have I... a good mix of like, oh, there's combat in here, but it's not mm -hmm. a dungeon crawl. Because to be honest, yeah. traditional dungeon crawls, I've done them, uh, not really always my thing. Because it's just fight after fight after fight. But having like a mixture of like puzzles yeah. and thing, you know, things that you need to think about, you know, yeah. and like remember not e even from like outside of the dungeon, like puzzles that are contained yeah. within the dungeon, but puzzles that also test your knowledge of the world is fun mm -hmm. because it does yeah. encourage you to pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I'm self admittedly not very good at combat in D&D, like running combat in D&D. I find it very difficult as someone who can't do math very well. Um, so I like to make my dungeons, I don't know, I'm saying this as if you don't know, but again, yeah. chat, performing to audience. Um, I like to make my dungeons puzzle and story more than combat. Combat is mainly there as part of the other two things. Yeah, to break it up. Yeah. I think, have I done just like a pure... I'm trying to think of what my dungeon is that I've done the most combat in. I can't even think. But, um... Yeah, I try and... Puzzles are definitely harder to make. And I've definitely made some bad ones. <laughs> um, but I find them more rewarding because I like doing them myself. <laughs> So yeah, the, the Hacker Hunter TV studio was actually a really good example of this. Because again, for her chat, it was just a TV studio, but it was a dungeon. <laughs> you say you never mapped it, but I can mentally recall the layout of the TV studio. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The dungeons are fun. Okay, so the only ones I've ever done have been like semi organic, so while I had to lots of fun making them once I'd sort of got the purpose worked out, I am nervous for when I have to make something that's like a building. 
because that will be a lot more yeah. restrictive in terms of like the actual shapes and geometry I have to use. Yeah. If I can find a way not to care about those things, I will not. So like, I don't know, one of my dungeons recently was under a tree. So that can be laid out however I want because I'm using the root structure of a fucking tree. Uh. <laughs> The minute, yeah, the, the harder ones I've made are like, yeah, lost in the state and stuff like that. But that's ancient history, that was so long ago. Um, yeah, it's much easier to make a dungeon when you're not worrying about <laughs> how it is outside. I mean, one of my, one of my, one of my I was gonna say more well known, I suppose, uh, infamous perhaps dungeons was literally connected by teleport. Room to room, so. <laughs> ah, Sabrina's gym. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it, look, it exists entirely in your psychosis anyway. <laughs> you have a bunch of rooms, you roll to which one you get. Lauren states technically had a bit of a dungeon-y vibe. That was more just like a fight where a place where a fight was. Reflection dungeon, yeah. That's the infamous one. The hidden entrance to the keep. Which one do you mean? Am I forgetting something that happened in my own game? <laughs> Go get him, kid. D yep, dungeon. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot the mechanics for that boss every single time I did it. And then one day I was like, I'm just going to remember you were in the party. I was like, I'm just going to remember Blue out. <laughs> and I've never forgotten it since. I suppose we're on DMing talk, <laughs> apparently, this week. a little bit, yeah. Ask us DMing questions, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm listening to my orchestral Rust England's playlist that I use for world building, and it's got a piece of music from Inquisition that just makes me so mad. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I can hear it because they used it in a trailer. And I can hear the like dialogue that normally goes over the top in the trailer. And I'm like, you son of a bitch, I'm gonna fuck it. <laughs> I expect you have questions. Yes, I do, motherfucker. <laughs> one how dare you look <laughs> <laughs> DMing vibes how do you DM thing good 
Uh, we'll get back to you on that as soon as we work it out. We'll let you know. <laughs> Pacing. <laughs> I think might be the answer to that. I hope it isn't, because I feel like I'm god at pacing. I'm shit at pacing, that's why I <laughs> I literally never ever think of pacing, because I am very much a big advocate of let the players have fun let the players do, do their whatever, thing. yeah. So I, I always, I tend, my session, the way I build sessions tends to be I write down, like, the general plot and obviously try to point my players in the direction, but I try to obviously think of like, you know, if they do this, if they do this, if they do this, but I'll always let yeah. them be the decision. It, yeah. yeah. I'll never, I'll always have the, the characters be like, oh, we, su we suggest you do this, or oh, this happened. I try to give them options. I'm never like, we want you to go here and do that this thing. It's like, yeah. It's like, I do want them to do the thing, but I want them to decide to go do it. It's yes. how, it's how I DM. Yeah. So I will have I like... NPCs encourage them that this would be beneficial. Yes. But it's never I never outrightly say, go do thing. Yes. I feel like I've accidentally gone every which way with this. Like I've accidentally gone two hands on and two hands off. <laughs> At various points in my DMing career. Is that what this I is? Guess that's what <laughs> it has. Time as a DM. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still not sure all the time where that balance is. And I think sometimes it's to do with party mood. So like, if your your players are all kind of like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what we do now. You have to be like, okay, let me give you a plan of action or suggest one or like put something in your heads to get some things connected. But sometimes the temptation when like players are like, I'm gonna do, we're gonna do this or this or this, is to be like, do this one. <laughs> That's when you gotta be like, nope, hands off. What are they gonna do? Yep. <laughs> and getting that right is so hard. It is, it is, because I, I think I have also had moments where I think this is probably why I've now taken more of the I like wanted players to do, because I think on the few occasions where I have tried to railroad a little bit. It's yeah. not been a bad session, but I've no I've noticed the engagement hasn't been as as yeah much. the brains turn off a lot yeah it's a little because it, unfortunately I even said to them I was like I'm sorry this session was like such a a lore dumpy session but there was information yeah. that I felt you needed to know and I yeah. couldn't think of any way to do it other than to have that NPC tell you and they were like well that's fine you know as, yeah. as, as long as we do something different next session <laughs> so, yeah yeah so it is it's really hard. It's, you know, sometimes it's there's hard. In, there is information that you need, which is why it's why video games tend to have cinematics. <laughs> yes. There's been a few times where I've felt bad and felt like I've fucked up a few times. Yeah, DM guilt is like 80% of the experience, yeah. surely. So getting past that is the hard bit. Like I said, I... I one, one mistake I did was uh, having a bit bad cast silence on a party member. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, we talked about that last one. Where, you know, I, I, you know, it's what they would have done. But then I removed a player from the conversation. Play like, agency is more important. And, uh, yeah. Ah. And afterwards, I was like, that was such a bad decision. I shouldn't have done yeah. that. I should have done something else. <laughs> yeah. But in, in, in the moment, I was like, that's what that player, that's what the character would do, which was such a bad yeah. thing to think. I'm gonna direct us away from doing this thing where we're like, I've done this thing wrong, I've done this thing wrong. Because as a DM, it's so easy to get in there, and it's harder to get out of it. So no. Good learning experience. If we're talking about positive things, then on the flip side, positive moments of when I've let the players do their own thing. For instance, one moment that I love very much was with my NPC drove. Uh, where after they were in a village and they'd been talked to him, I sort of, I meant, I literally sort of written down of like, in the evening, Draven sits on his roof and watches watches the sunset every night. So, if a player is ever walking around town in the evening, there is a chance they may spot him, you know, dice roll or whatever. And uh, AJ, AJ spotted him, and I was like, oh, you you noticed the silhouette on the roof of Draven's house, and she walked up and engaged in conversation and at no point did I tell her to do that she was just like, I'm gonna go for a walk, I want some fresh air make a perception check you see this, I walk over and I go talk to him and then we roleplay for like half an hour 
of the pair of them talking, and it was so good. And by the end of the conversation, AJ was like, before this moment, I kind of disliked this guy, and now he's like, my favorite. And I'm like, yes! Yes! That's good, that's, that's so the good happy. shit right there. <laughs> so happy! It's like one of my favorite moments ever. Yeah. I, I will always love it when players... It's weird talking about players ambiguously as if you're not one of my players. Um, it's fine. Uh, turn you up or music down just a little bit, please. Uh, yeah. Can do. Always, always yeah. speak up if the music is too loud. The better, you, yeah. the sooner you let we me know, the better. Literally, don't know. I have no way of knowing, really. So always, always speak up if the music is too loud. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I love moments where it's like you're so proud of your players. <laughs> like. Just little moments where you're like, you did it, guys. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and it can be it can be things like that. I think with oftentimes with me at least, it is more likely to be that stuff. It's more likely to be you went and talked to this person, or like you interacted with this plot element I didn't think you would interact with. <laughs> um, yeah, Sometimes it's like working shit out long before I thought you guys would. Stops there. Very weird to visualize this place right now because this is a place that has lived in my head since I was very little. That blue. Yeah. Yeah. Make it sure. Worth noting for oak heart people in chat, if you're gonna need me to prepare something, please DM me in the next twenty four hours. <laughs> or within the next three hours. <laughs> or within the next three hours potentially. You reminded me because I 100% have forgotten that Tala had uh, connections in there, so she will 100% want to find them. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I, I will need guidance that. in that because I don't know how to start. <laughs> I don't know where. I don't, I, I'm, I'm sure Tala does, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. That's, this is another thing I want to talk about. If we're talking about DMing stuff. Moments where you want to remind your players of shit. Because <laughs> campaigns go over a real long time. And I still don't know all the time when I should be like, hey, just so you remember. Yeah. Without, like, giving the game away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be, be, it's be always... a nice DM, because players cannot remember everything. No. Especially if you're dealing with me as a player who doesn't remember anything. <laughs> yeah. Moving yeah, sometimes out. you do have you to throw your players though. Moving my friends. Are you alright? Oh, what's wrong? I think that's an indication to stop drinking liquor. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, drink water. <laughs> I have fallen in a river, thank you very much. I also have done that. I'm pretty sure I was 10. <laughs> oh, I was about. Why are you asking this again? <laughs> what? 
Why does this Irish keep coming up? Why are you asking this again? <laughs> In chat. There you go. I don't know if Lo I'm assuming that Lartin probably heard that. <laughs> yeah. He says hi. <laughs> hi, Stanji. Oh, fuck off, Stanji. Don't come into my stream and tell people to fuck off. You fuck off. I can tell Stanji to fuck off in any medium. It's universal. I'm expecting him to message me on Discord. He doesn't need to, he can message you vicariously through me. I'm not seeing Stanji as typing. <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Please drink water. Do I drop? Not? You're allowed to enjoy a drink, but you should intersperse your drinks with water. You get told this every time you have a drink. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here, so clearly I don't need to. You very nearly weren't that one time. <laughs> oh, stop bringing that one up. I will not. <laughs> go take a nap or something. Go, go do some good self care. There are times when you should push yourself to make art, and there are times when you should go and take a nap. Yeah. Have, have some sleep slips. Also, I don't think that would work last in because he, again, he hasn't got any water, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, exactly, Frog. That is one of the main reasons I don't drink these days as, as well, is because it's like, oh, have a drink, cool, I feel like crap. You don't drink because you cry when you want. Yeah, because I feel like crap. <laughs> Uh, it, it reached a point in my life where I was like, why am I doing this? Because every time I do it, I feel shit. Yeah. And I was like, it, fuck, fuck social standards of you're in a social interaction, so you should drink. Uh, fuck that. No. Yeah. I think we should avoid this subject for a while. If we can. Drink water. Cheers. That is an excellent idea, Kay. That is insane. Yes! Many is. Because that is now on record. <laughs> he's saying he's going to paint some of his minis, which is something that we need to do. Unfortunately, I've definitely not got a setup which would be good for painting minis, because getting paint yeah. anywhere near this computer is a recipe for disaster. Hey, nice one, Dust. Congrats, Dust. Proud of you. Shush you. Why do you want to sound so disappointed in me? Because <laughs> I'm not a fan of drink drinking. <laughs> I am. You should, you should be grateful that I have a hobby. Dr drinking <laughs> should not be considered a hobby. <laughs> the moment it's considered a hobby, hey, you definitely nice have a problem. Mm. Well, then you have an art nice problem. Ooh, you're making dice. Definitely share pictures. It has been a yeah. long time since I made a set of dice. Oh, okay. I've mapped out the part of this that I know mentally very well, and I've put a great deal of detail into those sections. Now there is a lot of blank space. <laughs> if you would like any advice, Lighten, let me know. Yeah, I don't have any have some experience that I've made to hand, but some of them have actually been quite good, and one, one of them I would consider to be actually usable. Because there's like no bubbles in it. It just needs to like be sanded and numbered, which unfortunately is the part I hate doing. I hate sanding. <laughs> I could do with an auto sander. Because I have about mm. I have about six sets of dice that I have made that have not been sanded. Yes, hello. I think we're the D and D team, folks. Hello. I think that's us. <laughs> I think we're part of that. <laughs> I think we we classify as D and D. Team. Do we qualify? I think we qualify as D and D team.
can't relate. I fucking love sandpaper. <laughs> Set for each player in my campaign, that's so sweet! That's <laughs> yeah. I've tried to make sets for characters. Mm -hmm. the, ma the, ma the, main the main issue is getting the bubbles out. The squad is dice for characters, people. The, ma the main issue is getting bubbles out. The Ideally, yeah. to do that, you need uh, a pressure, pressure pot, which I do not have. go for it. No harm in doing it. Yep. See what comes out of it. Yep. So at the end of the day, if you put them up and no one buys anything, you've not lost anything. Because, you know, sites like Redbubble and stuff are like free to do. I've got stuff up on Redbubble that doesn't sell. But it's, it's no harm in putting it up there. <gasps> There's no, you, you don't lose anything. Hmm, this is gonna be like a multiple pieces of paper stuck together kind of map. Sometimes that's how it be. It do be like that sometimes. It do be like that sometimes. Go on. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> a good one. Mm. I always default to the same shapes. I need to not use these shapes. Although I could keep using those shapes and then claim architecture. <laughs> See? At a certain point, it's a a nation design. It's yeah. when I when I leave the rusting lands that I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> if you use it more than three times, it becomes a motif. <laughs> this is a motif. <laughs> I've realized a lot. This is very niche to me, but will make you laugh, I'm sure. I've realized a lot of my like designing of um, buildings comes from um, when I was in school and I studied classics, and I had to draw out the layer of Roman villas over and over and over again. I use a lot of the same layouts. <laughs> I have a mental image, Das. Even if you do not. I have for a long while. But yeah, I always I always catch myself doing these these shapes, these layouts, and I'm like, this is just a Roman villa again. <laughs> God damn it! What did the Romans ever do for us? I gotta keep some secrets to myself, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Should I be concerned? Because it's history. <laughs> You're supposed to say, Do you want the answers chronologically or alphabetically? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm actually going to make this shape even smaller. the urge is to make the shape bigger, make shapes smaller. <coughs> you say that, but you can learn a lot about someone from just that description.
But no, I do get your point. I don't know if you can hear my good pencil noises. Unfortunately can't. It's very sad. Oh, it's because I'm not riding with it. If I was riding with it, you'd hear it very loudly. <laughs> this paper's a complete mess because I... You use a ruler one time for red sharpie. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, you got little splodges everywhere. I need to clean that with some alcohol wipes. Yep. We've probably got some of that shit somewhere. In this day and age? In this economy? We have a workshop. <laughs> there you go then. Probably got a fucking thing of ethanol somewhere. I haven't learned anything about this house. We have most things somewhere. Um, function, 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 function. Think about how the space actually works, or if it actually works, and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. That's fair. I'm not. I'm not good at visualizing uh, faces. No, me neither. Jesus Christ, me it's neither. Terrible at visualizing faces. That's why someone. So, unfortunately, as they tend to do a lot in the adventure zone, going this person looks like this person is absolutely garbage for me. <laughs> yeah, I get, that does nothing for me. Yeah, even if it's someone really well known, I'm like, oh, they look like Brad Pitt, and I'm like, I can't, my brain can't do it. No, yeah, cannot. <laughs> so, which is why I guess face claims don't come from me very often. <laughs> yeah, it's only when I I, normally, it's only when I'm prompted that I pick one. I almost never describe when I'm describing things as a DM. It's something I've noticed in myself, and also when I write, actually. I very rarely discuss like actual, unless they're very distinct, um, like details of physicality. I generally go for vibe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, they're a very stern individual, mm. or they're a very you know um, composed person. You know, like I find those kind of descriptors create an image for me much better than if I had the minutia of the appearance. It makes it very difficult when people are then like, well then how does, you know, I want to, you know, I'm getting this character commissioned or I'm I'm doing this, that or the other. It's like uh it's like, well I don't I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is the short answer. Yeah. <laughs> I know how they come off. You know, like how they how the vibe comes off, but I don't know how uh, uh, how they actually look per se. Unless it's important. It gets harder as well. So like, I in my head know a lot more how like Cordelia, like humanoid NPCs look. If you ask me to tell you how Flair Ceres actually like the draconic parts he's a dragonborn for chat yeah. uh how he his like draconicness manifests like <laughs> i can get i can get <laughs> ba i can get basics down it's details yeah and again like comparing comparing to people doesn't help me like instead of saying yeah this person looks like this person it's much easier for me if you just say they have blonde hair they have blue eyes they have yeah bushy eyebrows <laughs> you, know, you know things like that <laughs> I suppose as well, things like colour and like 
distinctive traits are like the first things. Yeah, colours very important They're to the me. first things that I come up with when I create characters, of like signature colours yeah. and things. Especially with, yep. like, especially player characters, NPCs maybe not so much. Player characters, mm. it's definitely like colours and themes and stuff like that. As Chat saw when I was making my new character from scratch on, on stream, and wrote right yeah. down, you know, you know, light fire, dark fire, yin yang, things like that, balance, yeah. before I even started drawing. I'm trying to think of like how I set about. I guess yeah, color is a big thing. Cause like I, I remember like early days Cordelia and Flair and even Fenner, like they've all got a color detail. Cordelia's got very famous purple eyes. Um, you know, <laughs> Flair's a gold dragonborn. <laughs> uh, Fenner's hair, <laughs> it's big orange hair and the green eyes. You know, like it, the block colors that I, I remember and I recognize. And sometimes they're the same as like their favorite colors are like Fenner really likes the color orange is no surprise. Um, sometimes it's not. Yeah. Sometimes it's more to do with character. Yeah, specific detail is something I'm trying to get better at as a writer as well as as a DM. You know, that's one of those writing skills that I struggle with and I'm trying to get better at. And the specific you will find is the universal or something. I'll tell you this for nothing, chat. I'm not looking forward to digitizing this one. Oof. I may not design all of this. I might just design this corner, and when I take it into digital, build off of this. Because I think, yeah, I could do that. In fact, I would have to. Yeah. I just need to uh, decide what all of these things do. <laughs> all of these things do. What you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's different from thing to thing. If, I'm, if we're talking NPCs still, NPCs are very different to me than anything else, really. With NPCs, quite often it's, I need a role, Function. a role yeah. to be filled. There needs yeah. to be a bad guy here, there needs to be a shopkeeper here. Or sometimes yeah. it's as simple as, I would like there to be a nice person to talk to. I would, yeah. I would like there to I be an out, asshole I here. Make out a bit, yeah. I would like there to be a jerk here to provide, like, irritants. Or I would like this yeah. guy to be nice. Or I want this guy to be quirky. Mm -hmm. Like um, I can't remember the I can't remember the dwarf's name, unfortunately. But uh, the, the, there was a dwarf ranger that guided the party down from a mountain who famously had a goat companion whose name was <laughs> Horse. <laughs> God. Um. Yeah, m mine for me. Yeah, you sometimes just roll like. Uh, sometimes for me as well, just because of how Ocar works, I tend to need a n person who has an investment in a certain area, or a certain thing or cause, or things resolving a certain way. Because conflict. <laughs> Fallon's more was kind of built that way. Mm. It was like, well, I need a bunch of people who all want this all to resolve a certain way, different ways for different reasons. Why? How did this all happen? Especially when I was like, okay, there's two opposing sides. 
why do they oppose? What is what different? What makes them different, and what makes them the same? How have they ended up basically going about things the same way, but still somehow ideologically oppose each other? Fun questions, and then you end up with some weird people. <laughs> Then you end up with some weird and sometimes terrible people. It's always interesting to me what NPCs stick around and which ones fade away. Mm. Because I don't think, you know, as a DM you have some control over that. A little bit. There are a few NPCs that I've made specifically thinking that they will be longer lasting ones. Yeah, like your core cast, yeah. as I mentally call yeah. mine. Yeah, like um, Newland, I knew specifically was going to be key to the central story. Draven was one that I hoped would stick around, and he did. Yeah. See, it's always funny. There are definitely people I thought would be main cast in Overcut who have faded away, mm -hmm. um, and it's just interesting to me who who ends up making it. Or who, or who slips through the cracks sometimes. It's like, I don't know that the party still wants you to be around, but you've definitely not been... You know, it's, I just find it interesting. Who did I think would be main cast NPC? Well, it's well recorded who I didn't think would be main cast NPC, because I was fully expecting for him to not be around for the first however many le levels. <laughs> This is well recorded. I feel that I didn't expect Flair Saris to be around this early. <laughs> and again, I still don't know whether you guys put up with Flair or like him. <laughs> I, like I think him. you like him. I like him. I think you learned more about him in the last two sessions than you have in the last two years. <laughs> That's okay, he was always going to be a bit slow. A slow build kind of character. It's good to have slow build characters. Yeah. Some, uh, some, you know, some NPCs... This is legitimate uh, NPC advice, I guess. Some NPCs are defined by their backstory to some extent yeah. or so caught up in the events that made them who they are that the players are just going to find out by virtue of knowing them I'm looking at most of the cast of my fans more crew there because that's all grudges in history right it's just make them who they are some characters are not so much like that Flair's not so much like that he's actually got you know, a cause and things that he cares about in the present. <laughs> and thus, like Tala, is less willing to divulge his entire backstory. Mm. It's so weird, because when I play a character, I do tend to try to hang on to my backstory as long as possible, of like, I really want to, oh, yeah. I really want to drip feed this. Yeah. When I play NPCs, I have to fight myself so hard from revealing everything immediately. <laughs> yeah, me too. There are so many things about NPCs you guys are interact or have been interacting with. People kind of you've kind of gone off on your own now, but like that I'm like I just want you to know this so that I don't have to hold it anymore. <laughs> it pays off because sometimes you manage to hold on to a fact that a character sees visions of people who die for like three years. And then immediately taps an NPC a player on the shoulder. <laughs> like, wait! <laughs> I love that you guys caught that, but it's not the first time he's done that. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is... casting Death Ward mysteriously on people is a recurring character trait. I know, but now that it has context, it made us all go, it's wait! Worse, yeah. <laughs> Like the before, chat. it probably went unnoticed of like, oh, that's that's cool. He's just giving us some some support. He's, he's looking out for and us. And then the moment you you have context for it, it's like, ah, oh, wait, <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> for the chat who are not in Okar, 
my my dear boy Flesaris, who these guys have been interacting with for ages now, he's kind of in charge of the rebellion for the most part. Um, had a bad night of sleep and finally revealed to one of the characters that he is given visions by he's a cleric, he's given visions by his god of people dying and he can't tell anyone about it and it fucking sucks and then the next day after this conversation, before the party leaves on an adventure, leans over and taps Tyler on the shoulder and casts Death Lord <laughs> <laughs> and of course couldn't do anything about it in character but out of character I was you like that, yeah. wait <laughs> Has it on Thane before? He has. Yep. But now we have context, which is somehow scary. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's a good sign then that he. Casts Thane it... people don't stick around him very long. I suppose it's a good sign though when you think that he's he's cast it on Thane, but Thane is very much still here. So that's a still good hit. sign. <laughs> good time. People who wants to live, people who wants gone, people who are useful. I need a Venn diagram of who's in what. <laughs> <laughs> my NPCs. I intend to firmly occupy the middle spot. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Tala? Yeah. <laughs> I intend to be a problem until I'm made to go away. <laughs> I am looking for trouble, and if there isn't any, I will make some. I will create them. God, I'm so excited for you to be back in just time. It's gonna end terribly. <laughs> I'm so excited. Here comes the general indeed. Oh, that boy. <laughs> I talk about what my NPCs is like. <laughs> Just like children I'm frustrated with. <laughs> this boy, I swear to God. Not how D and D be, to be honest. <laughs> My NPCs really live in my fucking head. Annoying the shit out of me. <laughs> With their bad decisions. Because they aren't omnipotent like I am. Now you finally get to an insight, Das, into what it's like when my Discord decides to lag. Which it doesn't appear to have done tonight. No, it really... it must be something wrong with the Discord specifically on my laptop. Hmm. Maybe give it a fresh install. Yeah, in fact I might do that right now. Because I'm not running it on here. Uninstall things off my laptop earlier, and my laptop was not very happy about it. <laughs> oh, interesting. It's a stream problem? Oh, is it a stream problem? Apparently it's so. It. Stream buffering hard. Nemo, you were having a couple of stream issues earlier today, weren't you? I wonder if this is a Twitch problem. my stream lab say? Uh, only using 10% of the GPU, that's good. Notifications, so they have any what warnings? Is, uh, I've not had any nice. warnings pop up. Yep. 60 FPS. Everything says there's no problems today. Is, what does this mean? 5%, is that a 5% frame drop? Is that what that 5% means? I don't know. Potentially? Potentially that's a 5% frame drop. Might have just been a bloop. It's okay. It's okay. Ah. Uh, it's been a week already. 
course. Please be careful for the love of God. Yeah. Well, there's not much he can really do. <laughs> it just works in the numbers. Yeah. Where people can unfortunately be ill. I have noticed I'm slowly sinking in frame. Yeah. Posture. There we go. No, it's not posture, it's my chair had broken, remember? Oh, uh, right. <laughs> Discord, leave and install, please. Thank you. Ooh, you can hear the anger. Hmm? The anger of the laptop being told to do something. <laughs> 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 Laptop game. <laughs> yeah. Too real. And just got up. Oh yeah, something I checked today, unrelated to anything. Um, just because I was curious, because what I did was when I was searching for more music, I was like, I feel like I saw uh NSP, you know, tweet out they were fine with it, which is why I googled it, and hence why I now have NSP on the playlist. Because they did, I literally googled Ninja Sector Party Twitch, and the first result was a tweet that they had sent out saying, you are perfectly fine to use our, our music on Twitch. And I was like, okay. So today I was like, mystery score Twitch! And again, I found a tweet uh, but it, it, the tweet is a quote, it's like quoting someone else's tweet. And that original tweet that they're quoting has been deleted. So I don't have what they were replying to. The, the response implies that Mystery Skulls is okay with people using things, but I'm like... Is that evidence enough? Because the original tweet is missing. And I'm like, oh, I really want to add Mystery Skulls to my playlist, but I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> the tough thing is as well is like, even if they say they're cool with it, is the Twitch's auto, auto fucking thing. DMCA yeah. gonna be fun? Yeah. So like, that's that's the, that's the t that's the tweet that I found. And like the context, the context of the context of its response and responses to that tweet implies that it is okay. <laughs> but I'm like, is implication enough? Because <laughs> I really want to add the music to the playlist. I don't know what you want me to say, Stanji. I am sat upright. <laughs> you know, my back. The base of my back is flush to the chair, so I don't know what you want me to do. My head was forward because I was turned to the side because I was looking at my other screen. I can't help that. Okay, my Discord's had a fresh restore, so hopefully that will be fine next time we play Final Fantasy, <laughs> or or D and D probably more likely. I mean, D and D tomorrow is not happening, so Final Fantasy Final Fantasy is more likely. Final Fantasy is more likely. Whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. There are so many sticky notes on this monitor right now about Final Fantasy housing. <laughs> oh yeah, how did, so many. how did that go? Because you guys were going to... How does that go? How is it going? Going. Oh, okay, so it didn't go this morning. Because I know you two said last night that you were going to check something in the morning. Oh, we will be checking things every six hours for the foreseeable future. Every six hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, me and Kay at like 
various intervals are just like, here is your, whoever's online is like, here is the update. This one's gone, this one's gone, these two new ones have added, they're at this price, they're going down at this much. Like, <laughs> it's an operation. It's almost like buying fucking property. <laughs> it is, yeah. Zero out of ten would not recommend. <laughs> Hey, yeah, it must have just been a one-off frame drop, that's fine. I can, deal, fine. I can deal with one-offs. One-offs are expected when streaming. Yeah. I'm remembering, like, when I first started running out of cart and, like, all the, the design principles I had for Josiah slowly coming back to me, and it's such a nostalgia trip. It's like, oh yeah, that's how Josiah works. I might have to bring up my own world anvil. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's for! It's true. Because I do actually have one on Josiah. I don't. They've changed the way the dashboard looks on World Anvil, and I no longer understand how this works. Oh, have they? It's been a while since I've used it as well. Yeah. Imazius, Rustingland, Cities, just like. Yeah, this is one of the few ones I've actually done. <laughs> I literally have a section on architecture. Wonderful. I knew I did. Laughing at my own uh, World Anvil reference on Josiah. I have like a, a quote bit at the top that's meant to look like it's from a history book. And the last little bit is. Uh, da -da -da -da. This is a city built, uh, designed for siege, built to hold, to outlive all other cities and strongholds. And in the hundreds of years it has stood, not a soul has succeeded in its capture. The safest place in all Haloria, or so the story goes. Ha. <laughs> so the story Doubt goes. well. So the story goes. I don't even remember writing this, this was so long ago. Get this. I think I can link this for chat if they want it. do that. I don't know if this link will work, chat, but you can have it. That's good art you're doing. I hadn't even 
flipped in to see. That's also what I'm doing. Link works, yay! I think it might be the only article I've ever finished on my World Anvil. I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was like, oh, this is a rare occurrence. <laughs> yeah. It's tough to type out things on World Anvil when you also want things to be a surprise for your players. That's fair. <laughs> Deemed Josiah so safe enough considering you guys uh, lost it within a week. <laughs> It is for cool. Oh, time for him time, to bully me. Time for meds. <laughs> Core has appeared for his routine health check. <laughs> it's 9 p.m. routine health check. Mm -hmm. I might take this 9 p.m. health check to top up my drink, but more importantly, stretch my legs. <sighs> so, excuse me for a minute. Interestingly, my phone has not yelled at me to take my meds. Why not? Okay, unit. <laughs> Okay, I've nearly finished... well, I haven't finished this. I've nearly finished how it looks. I need to work out how it functions. Which is hard, I think. And then I've got to digitize it, which is the really hard bit. Um, could be lazy and just photograph it, but I won't do that. What I'll probably do is I'll photograph it, I'll take it into Photoshop and completely rebuild it. Because this is the standard I have created for myself. <laughs> Would my players notice if I didn't go through all this trouble? No. Would I? And yes. And thus is unacceptable. I'm really, I keep being tempted to be like, hey, I'll show you what I'm doing. Can't do that.
You can tell I'm very excited about stuff that's happening in my campaign at the moment because I'm nervous about it constantly. My dad asked me today, he was like, do you still get nervous doing D&D stuff? Because you obviously have been playing D&D for a very long time. And I've been running it almost as long. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> every time, every single time. <laughs> What is? <laughs> I have an expertise. <laughs> yes, I just came back and glanced over at Spook's screen to see that he had googled pyromancy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he wanted it for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've created a bunch of spaces, so I now need to allocate what they're all for. <laughs> Fair enough. Had a friend come today. People probably saw them in the background earlier. This, this little one. This little one. She got a friend. i to open the Twitch stream up. I got myself the first one back in the summer and then Joe Cat released the second and Spook was like, Don't don't order the second one. You'll get it for Christmas. Forgetting that it had to come from America, so it only came today. But I still love them. And I and I'm not gonna lie, the little white one has made me wanna make a little albino goblin character that I might do. Aww. Gotta make some gobbos. Among the many things that inspire me to make characters, such as new, <laughs> new classes and songs, is of course <laughs> plushies! Plushies, yeah. plushies inspire me to make characters, hence Ix, Ix being based off the Arch of Trix, who is there. You probably can't see her because she's at the back of the room, but she's right there. Mm -hmm. With Nubia. Yeah. Oh, did you not get the green one core? Oh. Sorry, bud. Maybe he'll do a rerun in the future, I don't know. <laughs> what are you giggling at? What are you giggling at? I can see it now that you've seen the pictures, but... <laughs>
diabetes. Honestly, after yesterday, we should not be trusted with memes. <laughs> memes should be taken away from us. <laughs> I have never... I, like, I've never got to a point where I thought I couldn't get through a dungeon because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> that's the reason... I was, like, concerned for my yeah, well-being. That's the reason you play MMOs, that is. Yeah. <laughs> of just being locked in paralytic laughter in the middle of a dungeon with six of your friends. <laughs> Don't let your memes be dreams, that's real. Hmm. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna do a Google. I was going to do a Google! Spotify Shuffle specifically wants me to listen to just songs called Finale that are the end of musicals. <laughs> uh, yes. I had about three of them in a row. People who write musicals, please, think of something else. I'm begging. Think of a better name. <laughs> I am once again begging you to not call the final song in your musical Finale. I understand that that is what that moment in time is, but... It should be the song that plays during the finale, not the name. <laughs> not the name of the song. Same same for intro. <laughs> yes! <laughs> They're better with that, fortunately. this drawer is pulling all this cables, pulling this stuff down. Let's just keep doing it. Surely this won't end this way. Ah oh, yes, and just when you thought you were safe, KMT adds more books. Oh, goddamn. Leave me alone. Absolutely not. <laughs> Dice are in here at the moment. Of course, I should have guessed. I have to do that frequently, that's is another reason that Toy House is great. <laughs> Cheers. Sorry. I'll chat back up. Even though age is one of those things that I generally actually don't <sighs> put in Toy House. <laughs> yeah. All of your characters are less than 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Only due to racial restrictions. Series 10. I quickly go double check that. <laughs> yeah, theory's 10. Kirok was 7 at the time of her campaign. As someone who's currently playing an elf, <laughs> yep. I'm gonna abstain from this conversation. That's why, that's why he beat beat me to it and included except from Dell in this statement. Yeah. To be fair, Tala. Tala. 
Yeah. Hell is an exception to a rule. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're trying to think of when I would have even told you that. <laughs> when the group goes, okay, it's time to kill this guy, she's always like, yeah, cool. <laughs> but when, when it comes to like, oh, you're an asshole, generally she keeps her mouth shut because she knows she's shit at talking. She lets other people talk. She's a, like a child. She's a grumpy ass bitch. <laughs> I'm just reminded how useful the DMG is. I think I forget. <laughs> Shock and horror. <laughs> yeah, right? The thing but literally like... called the Dungeon Master's Guide. Turns yeah. out it's pretty fucking useful. It's true. Um, but I tend to think of the DMG as like Encyclopedia de Rules. <laughs> um, but I forget there's like whole other shit in there. Yeah. That's absolutely useful. Mm -hmm. Okay, what map am I doing now? Why did I just put the pencil I had in my hand? There it is. Ooh, I haven't made a map like this in front. this in a while. I had to do this a lot when you were in Fountainsmore. I haven't had to do it since you've been in the woods. <laughs> um, but a lot of times I have, I can visualize things. Like, I know how my cities are. Mm -hmm. How they look and how places are. And I can think about how I visualize that. Um, but then I can't convert it into a map. So I do in the little corner, I just really shittily sketch out whatever because normally when i have a visual it's of one angle and one picture version of it which makes it hard for it to turn into 3d space um so i just sketch whatever that visual is out in just shapes like really broad like like yeah like thumbnail sketches right like um and then i try and be like well that would be this shape from above and try and reverse engineer it that way yeah Every time this song comes on, I think about Tyler. Which one? Um, the song is Killing Boys. I actually don't know. Um, it's a holiday song. Uh, 
not the whole song, it's only the first few lines. Hang on. <laughs> well, kind of the whole song, but not for the same reasons. But the first few lines, hang on. Killing boys. Uh, da -da -da. Told me pick my battles and be picking them wise, but I want to pick them all and I don't want to decide. <laughs> I always, every time that comes oh, on, yeah. I'm like, Tala! <laughs> Jesus. The rest of the song is much more restrained, which is not very Tala. Fair. <laughs> But that first bit, I'm always like, oof. Mm -hmm. Good title lyrics. The general vibe of this song, I associate with Tyler, but I don't know if you would agree with me. Can't comment having not heard the song. Nah, I'll have to send you a section, the other section of the lyrics that I'm like, I think of Tyler with. Okay, I'm literally gonna do it now, because I can do it on my phone. <laughs> The general tone of these lyrics is pretty pissed, by the way. <laughs> Excellent. Shapes. About the shapes. It's about the shapes. <laughs> I'm so sorry chat, I keep putting you on the left side of the screen. I need to stop doing that. I can't see you. It is. Spit out your drink now. Thank you for dinner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shut up, girls, I see you laughing. <laughs> yourself at work or something. All my instincts you mean you don't know? They return in the grand facade so soon we'll burn without a noise without my pride I reach out from the inside no. Oh. 
gonna be back real quick. Hi. If it's like you, it could be that like you maybe slightly hold it, in which case you might need to stretch. Yeah, ooh, I can feel that. That's really... Yeah, I think I think that needs stretching. It's really, like, hard and tough. We get second hand spook. return. How goeth the art? Okay. Doing wings. Oh, I can see that, my goodness. Yeah. 
So many good shapes. That is like probably one of the most complex wing shapes that I have ever drawn. <laughs> because it's yeah. such a specific angle. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. <clears throat> we now have second hand spook, because he has joined in a chat. Yes. Fine by me. Oh, I know what that's about. <gasps> bo -bo -bo -bo. <laughs> you have a song that you're like listening to and you forget how much it ex like whoa, how much it um escalates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just like vibing to the intro and then you're like oh. oh. <laughs> This is one of those songs for me. I once again want to thank my past self for just constantly doodling, like, castles and such. Because... That style of architecture is helping me a great deal with this city. <laughs> Sakura from Naruto. <laughs> if Kay was here, he would back me up. <laughs> Kay is not here. You are alone in your weebdom. Kay has abandoned you <laughs> to weeb alone. Sometimes you just have to rotate the canvas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sometimes you're also blind as shit. So filling in tiny spaces is very difficult. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not using this side, because there's notes normally on this side. There's not at the moment, but... I'm just holding up on my D&D spoilers. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> there are so many spoilers in here. <laughs> so just you move that closer to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Within these pages contain many things. Most of them defunct. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. I've just smudged the drawing I just did. Good job, me. Okay, so if that's kind of what I'm working with, then I probably also would have... Now I'm working in more than one dimension. It's about depth. <laughs> think of more topics for us to talk about, but A, I'm concentrating, and B, I don't know how to talk about anything other than Final Fantasy. That's how you can tell Blue's concentrating. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Part of my point was that we were concentrating too much to talk. Yeah, and as people can tell from, like, bursts of action and then long periods of nothing happening, is that I'm spending some time tabbed out looking for references. <laughs> I should have known. Because the stream is set to program, not window. If I move that over there, people will still be able to see it. Mm -hmm. That's like that. Now this is starting to exist in 3D space. Because that means... There's also a this. 
There's a that and a that. Okay. So that means if I'm turning that into top down, my main thing, I might have to go do research real quick. <laughs> that is not. Straight line. That's okay. I've never claimed to do that. <laughs> that means there's a that shape, and there's a that a shape. Whoops. There's a that a shape. Yes, chat, this is how my brain operates. There's a that a shape, and there's a that a shape. <laughs> doing with our stuff chat while we've been very quiet I think our more talkative members are occupied that's the thing with our stream is that it reaches a point where everybody's focusing on everyone's stuff. concentrating I'm curious how Martin is doing with his dice this mm. is something that I have tried first hand That line, I got very overzealous with that line. <laughs> it's one of those technicalities things. Because <laughs> they were basing it on piercing as in like javelins and tridents and shit that you throw at people. And I think it's also going to be one of the chains. Ooh, I have done that very differently. I'm... That's fine. <laughs> this is making a Venn diagram. <laughs> yeah, because I memed earlier that. Because he said there's three ways I think of NPCs. The ones I like, one that I want dead, and ones that I tolerate. And I said, I need you to make a Venn diagram of them. Ah, uh, yes. The one <laughs> With my I'm NPCs. The, the one that I'm in the center of. <laughs> <laughs> I like you and I tolerate you, but also die. <laughs> That's Tyler's relationship with uh -huh. everyone. <laughs> It's not just NPCs. Yeah, I, 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 well, to be fair, is Tyler going to be in the middle of this or is Sal? <laughs> <laughs> they both can be together, they're buds. Like a, never, you know what? That's where they belong. <laughs> together at last. <laughs> Freaking jock squad over here. <laughs> Uh, I'm so excited to see what nonsense you two, what you two specifically, <laughs> all of you, but you two specifically get the fuck up to. Now that you're in Josiah. I mean, I mean, I said it sort of as a joke earlier, but in all honesty, I, I don't go looking for trouble, trouble finds me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Zal's for. Because when it comes to things things like this, much like so, in Fountains More, Tal just kind of shrugs and is like, I don't know, I'll just follow you guys. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of going to be a lot similar here, of like, I don't freaking know. I'm not a soldier, I don't know how to infiltrate a fucking city. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of what Kay was saying last session in character, is like, 
His main thing with Zal is that people will try and stop him, but Tala's not in that point with him anymore. Nah, Tala does Tala's kind like, of- she's willing to let him at least try these days. Yeah. <laughs> one chance. <laughs> one, to, one chance to test my patience. <laughs> which direction you take a step in. <laughs> Depends on which way it goes. I have a vague idea of objectives for you guys that you've talked about in character. But how you... The things that happen between there is a mystery to me. <laughs> I have plenty of things. What order or if they will come up is a different thing. But I have a lot of stuff. Just depends what you find, because you haven't got very long. Assuming you don't fucking pull some time travel nonsense once again. I mean, in our defense, we got sent to the Feywild. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like we were just like, oh, we should time travel. We were in the no, Feywild. No, no. <laughs> I know. Just memeing. <laughs> I could send you to the Feywild again if you want. No, I'm good. I mean, I know that's what Zal wants. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, wouldn't say that's what Zal wants. <laughs> Did I put you in a, pos a position where you would maybe want or desire time travel? Yes. Yes. Did I expect K to utilize it in such a way? No. <laughs> Did I know it was technically possible? Yes. Did I think he actually would? No! <laughs> But that's always Kay's. We can we can say nice things about him because he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Kay's like big strength is that he's willing to be the one who does the crazy shit, yes. right? He does not care. <laughs> Go to the fair one again, but as a tourist. The Feywild's interesting, it depends what shard you end up in. The shard that you guys were in was a fun one. The hard thing is, obviously, if you want to get back to the same fragment, is finding it. Spending much too time, too much time shading this when I will ignore all of this when I digitize it. <laughs> it's like I will completely digitize and lose all of this, but <laughs> I need a bigger Venn diagram. <laughs> I have too many damn people in my game. And I'm assuming some of the people. You want them there, I don't have tokens that you can access yet. That's a point, I need to do that at some point. Yes. Giving this to people I have tokens for? Yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> This song hurts me. Get out of here. It's 
legit ranger. <laughs> Which then makes the ranger even more invalid. <laughs> Memes for me. <laughs> it's for me. I'm gonna do because as much as I don't want to I do <sighs> I'm gonna be nice to myself <laughs> and make myself do something I don't want to do mm -hmm. <laughs> which, is, which is do some digital digitizing 
of some stuff that I've already started. So it's changing gears. I've done quite a lot of designing. I've got a lot of the like base structure of stuff that I didn't have done, but I should make myself as, you know, the balance to that. Mm -hmm. Do some of the digitizing that I don't want to do. <laughs> Which means trying to get Photoshop to open. <laughs> One of the reasons that I switched to Clip Studio Paint, I'm hoping, is that it would run better for the purposes of streaming. I don't actually know if that is the case. But I like, I kind of like using it now, anyway. Yeah, you've adjusted. Oh, I wish a song from this show hadn't come on, because now I just want to listen to this show. Curses! I mean, you can. <laughs> I, I'm literally gonna go listen to chess right now. <laughs> in game one? Which track is it? I've got stuck in my head right now. In game two? No worries, though. Yes, it's in game two. Oh, the grey illumination of the Photoshop screen. <laughs> software when you go to open something it goes to the last folder you accessed mm -hmm. blue what do you think the last thing i made it for <laughs> i'm concerned Wait. because you're giggling so much it was for chat this time <laughs> 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 see <laughs> oh no barris's dumb chocobo head face <laughs> to post all of those pictures to Twitter as a seamless sequentially seamless yeah. one after the other like with no nobody interrupting him just one after the other zooming in so that when you have the whole thing open it just perfectly goes down you can understand what nearly killed us all in Discord last time <laughs> is called such krauser meme was not my intention was <laughs> <laughs> not my intention <laughs> was not my intention what the fuck am i looking for i'm not even doing i'm not even doing the right shit <laughs> okay what do you want me to just go for <laughs> your eyes only <laughs> oh god let me open it big <laughs> me blind open yeah, link um, yes One of these is very interesting to me. Mm. Uh, no, three of these, three of these are very interesting to me. 
Interesting. <laughs> yes, Jess. <laughs> well, no, that one that one doesn't. The one that makes me laugh is uh middle of the two on the right. <laughs> the sole occupant <laughs> of that overlap makes me laugh. That's a uh, one day I hope the rest of you can see that. <laughs> Is that the I love you but you need to die or something overlap? It's people fame once gone, people finds use fame finds useful overlap. <laughs> oh, is that Zal? That <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's three people in that. Okay, okay, okay. I understand, but it's also very funny. The one I find interesting is the first one you said, Das. That's the one I find interesting. Right. I won't talk too much about that because I'm not allowed to say anything about it specifically. <laughs> Otherwise, this will be like a me and Kay conversation when we're trying to work out where you guys are in stories. So we're just being like, is this the thing where this happens? <laughs> no context. I mean, yeah, fair, Daz. <laughs> I forgot about that. Say it ass, but I will say none of them. Wait, did I already do this? Was I this nice to myself? No. I'm never this nice to myself. <laughs> Load roll 20. I don't even fucking believe this. I can't believe I did some of this before now. Hey, go you. <laughs> Thank you, pass me. Hey. Wow. I bet 
the time I was like, yeah, future me will thank me for this. <laughs> Posture check in this economy? <laughs> Actually, it's <sat> alright. <laughs> Unbelievably. Same. Can I keep. I've got um, the extension for Roll20 disabled because it started fucking shit up for me Fair for a while. And I haven't reinstalled it, even though I think that will fix the problem. Yeah, because you, um, you have to manually update it. As well. Yeah. So I keep right clicking things and then going to be like, fit to size! Mm -mm. That's not a base roll 20 feature for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to. I don't understand how space works. Yeah. That seems. That seems correct. <laughs> Where's Palkia when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo, where are those remakes? <laughs> it's February! <laughs> it's February! Pokemon's anniversary is in like two weeks. Get on it! <laughs> if in two weeks we don't have remake confirmation, a good chunk of we the internet. Go to war. A good chunk <laughs> of the internet is gonna be very upset. <laughs> a very large chunk of the internet is gonna be very upset if we don't have remakes confirmed. I need to decide which way around this map is. Let's be real, I'm a Pokemon weeb, I'll be happy if anything gets announced. Yeah. Like, Pokemon Snap 2? Sign me the fuck up! Snap was great! <laughs> I remember my primary complaint about it as a kid was why isn't it longer? <laughs> so I'm <laughs> down for more Pokemon Snap. Pretty much have those levels memorised even now. Because they were very short levels. Oh, hello! Bleep Narrowin, hi! Thanks for resubscribing! Thank you. You know what time it is, chat. That means we gotta get the awoo! Get the awoos! Awoo! Okay. There it is! Awoo! <laughs> <laughs> I will continue this meme. <laughs> There it is. Thank you ever so much. Once again, do not need to do that, but thank you is very much appreciated. Or probably spend it on Pokemon. <laughs> All I need is for Nintendo to confirm remakes. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me, Nintendo? <laughs> I mean, but it would get me playing Pokemon again. <laughs> and then I'd be there just like, hey, I got I got diamond, can you trade me the version exclusives? <laughs> <laughs> can I have a Glamial, please? <laughs> <laughs> I need to complete my Pokedex. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I probably don't need to yeah, complete too much. If they remake it, I'm getting Pearl again. <laughs> I'll get diamond. Put my put that down already. I'll be getting diamond. T today I heard my first uh, speculation as to what people think the titles will be, because you know they were they had, you know Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, uh, and the speculation was um, Eternal Diamond and Infinite Pearl. That would make sense. Was the speculation. That would make a lot of sense. I was like, them, them's good. Them's good. They're good ones. Them's are good. So, uh, I, though, as the person that I learnt this from said. I don't think you'll ever beat Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Mm. Excellent names. I... Excellent games. Oh, excellent names, yeah. Excellent names, excellent games. But they I were like, but they were have like in not played them. Oh, so good. They were really good. No, like, at the, the, at the time, know. they were like peak Pokemon. It was it was like everything was an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, my list of actually played Pokemon games is not actually very long. Unsurprisingly, I played every generation. Every single one. <laughs> yeah. But that's your thing. I don't I don't play That'd every I don't like, play every single like, one. Yeah. 
I don't play every single one. I pick I pick one of the two. Oh like, yeah, yeah. You you know, there was a, there, gen, yeah. I don't know if you said there was a picture going around Twitter which would draw your Pokemon path. I didn't do it, but I should have done. Yeah, I mean, so it was basically: did you do red or blue? Did you do gold or silver? Yeah, I saw the thing. I just yeah. didn't fill it out because I'm like, I'd have to make so many jumps. <laughs> See, I um, would be like uh, Jeremy Bermy. <laughs> Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Bermond. <laughs> because I went back a lot and played yeah. old ones. This is Tuesday And then came afternoon. forward. Mm -hmm. This is Tuesday afternoon and also July. <laughs> <laughs> Too real. <laughs> How is that bit getting more relevant? <laughs> <laughs> because the pandemic is still happening. <sighs> the world is still on fire. But yeah. I, I remember now, the reason I didn't fill it in is because I couldn't start, because it was draw your Pokemon path, red or blue, and I was like I started with yellow <laughs> so I immediately could not do that correctly <laughs> I went from diamond pearl backwards <laughs> so I went, I went so to... like, mine's like this nonsense See, I, I had yellow, my brother had blue eventually he gave me his blue which I then played through, but that was like years in the future so for me it was yellow Gold, uh, ruby, um, and god, when I put on myself on the spot, I can never remember. So it was yellow, gold, ruby, did emerald, I did do emerald, I missed out on crystal. That was another one that I went back and did. I can't remember that. Um, then it was, then it was diamond. Then it went, what was after diamond? Uh, black and white. Uh, that was black, was what I went for. Which is weird because I like Reshiram more than Zekrom. I remember there was a reason I chose black over white, I can't remember what it was. I'm gonna assume it was probably something like it had Growlithe in it. <laughs> yeah, or like, ex friend is getting this one. Probably, yeah. I think a I lot of mine are my sister was getting the other one. Oh. <laughs> I think I think what I think it was a case of like I would check the version exclusives when they got when they were all revealed and which and I would literally tally which one had the most that I liked and I think for it, that one it was black had the most but I prefer Reshiram like the, the legendary was one of the ones where I preferred the one in the other game but the grand total I preferred the others then I got X and X and Y. I did get I did get black too. That was probably the first one that I the first Pokemon game that I actually didn't finish. Next, then Omega Ruby, and then Sword. I missed out Heart Gold. Also, but I got Heart Gold. Heart Gold. Oh, bring up the list. Heart Gold, absolutely stunning. Such a good game. It's gonna be very revealing. Uh, I remember I did get Fire Red, uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, and I did enjoy playing it because uh, I feel like I got more playtime out of it on my uh, you know, Sun and Moon. I yeah, I got Sun, I got Sun, and I got Ultra Sun. Mm -hmm. See, some of these I've played as emulators. No wrong with that. No wrong with that. I have more. Um. Shelf. In order, Pearl was the first one I ever played. Ooh, I think it might then be X. I think I did that bigger jump. Didn't you have Y? You had new battle, didn't you? Nope. I oh, know you had X. Who, who do I know that had Y? I know somebody had Y. It might have been one of my old them... friends. Is that for Sapphire after X? I don't know why I always thought yes. that was back, but obviously because it's a remake It's a remake, line. but yes, it's active. Yeah. And then I've also played some of them as emulators, but I can't remember which ones are which. I think it's Soul Silver I've played as an emulator. Or Silver I've played. It might be literally Gold or Silver, the old one that I've played as an emulator. I think I have, uh, I think I have them. I think that literally might, and then I think I've played uh, red as a 
emulator too, but can, not very far. You can tell that the 3DS era is the era where uh, I started to get jobs and started to have money, <laughs> yeah. because technically I only played one, but I got into the bad habit of buying both. <laughs> Yeah. Because suddenly I was a teenager who had money because I'd had money. My, I had my first job. So I ha I own Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Alpha yeah. Sapphire is untouched. I own See I have oh, um, I think I own Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Mm. Ultra Moon is untouched. Yeah. Such a bad I have... of mine. <laughs> yeah. I have X Moon and then Ultra Sun. Ultra Sun I haven't finished. I did, I was, I was... And that's because I started playing Ultra Sun not long after I finished Moon. Yeah, they're very similar. They are very, very the similar. The beginning is exactly the same. Yeah, I think that was a lot of people's complaints about Ultra. Ultra is that the beginning was indistinguishable. Yeah, I think if I played it now, I would enjoy it because I think I have restarted it because it's been so long since I played Moon um, that I wouldn't remember. But I just wanted to get to the end of Ultra Sun because I wanted to do the legendary hunting because I just got done doing all the legendary hunting in Alpha Sapphire and I loved the shit out of that. Mm -hmm. That was like my life for a really long time. I'm a bit like that in the Ultra Sun that's in the, in the DS that's like lingering around this PC because uh, I'm, I'm literally like in the sort of home run of Ultra Sun of like in the last little bit and I'm like if I get all these legendaries I can send them to my Switch because you can do that now. Pokemon Sword I blitzed through. I was yeah. fully invested in that when it came out. I was like, oh my god, it's on the console, it's on the Switch, it's so cool, I can play it on the TV. TV. I can take it with me to work as well, because it's portable. Yeah. So, played the shit out of Sword, bought the I didn't even buy the I won the DLC in a competition, and played the shit out of the DLCs. So, yep. I've beaten the stories, so I'm now in the end game of Legendary Hunting in Sword and Shield. Yeah, I did play Conquest. Uh, I did. Play I have played Conquest. I have played some of the like extra Pokemon games. They're called spin-offs. Played... Yeah, spin-offs. That's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I've played. Oh god. There's Ranger. Mystery yeah, Dungeon. Ranger. I played. Um, Mystery. Mystery Dungeon. Ex Dungeon. There's which one? Red Rescue Team, Blue Rescue Team, Explorers of what? Time, Explorers of Darkness. Explorers of Time is the blue one, isn't it? Yes. Explorers of Time, yes. Explorers of Darkness, one. and then they did Explorers of Sky. But I do not remember them very well. They're oh, good games. Yeah, I played. I played Conquest. I kind of enjoyed it, but I was in because I think of how old I was at the time. As I started to get to the end, I started to find it too hard because when you boil it down, it is kind of like a tactics game. I suck at tactics. I feel like Pokemon, I, I want to speak to play Conquest because he loves Final Fantasy Tactics, and while I've never played Final Fantasy Tactics, it looks a lot like Conquest in terms of its mechanics. Yes, Pokemon. Do you know what Pokemon game I've probably played the most of? Pokemon Battle Revolution. <laughs> wow, I had Revolution. That was like my first. I played game. a lot of Pokemon Battle Revolution when it was on the Wii. I was like, the problem is that I, I played it, and then I reached a point where I was like, this is just battling, I want to catch yeah. Pokemon, and I immediately lost interest in it. Yeah. The thing was with me is that my Wii was mostly there for like, when people came around, occasionally, but my brother and my sister are both die, like, when they, they play Pokemon games, they hunt legendaries, they do shiny hunting, all that stuff. Yeah. I was not like a... Pokemon player. <laughs> so they both uploaded their Pokemon to Battle Revolution. So <laughs> it was all level 100 shiny level uh, legendaries. Wow. Um, for the most part. Like <laughs> shinies and legendaries. And um, like it was mostly like my friends coming around making battle cards with their teams on it and just and also my, my sister's like a like you are like finish the Pokédex. Like, I wanna, so I, we I had everything. Collect, I'm a collector, if you couldn't tell from my hordes of plushies and mountains of dice. Yes. Um, so, like, <laughs> I played a lot of it because it was a lot of, like, what, you know, my friends would come around and be like, we'll play on the Wii. Oh, we'll do Battle Revolution. And just make teams and see what fucking happens. <laughs> 
Yes, Colosseum was the game where you steal Pokemon. Freaking love Colosseum. I've put it, it's on the list for games that we're going to play through as a group when the pandemic's finished. Uh, that we do with like Stanji and Marsh coming over, sitting on the studio sofa games. So we're currently on Final Fantasy, which has been on pause obviously for a year. But I've put uh, Colosseum on the list as one to do because I freaking love Colosseum. I must have played through it about four or five times back on the GameCube. Hello. Mm. You're nice. You're okay. How's your leg? Colosseum had a sequel, which I was desperate to get my hands on for many, 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 many years. Because I couldn't find it in any shops. And then eventually I uh, found uh, a copy on eBay, and because of, again, how old I was, I had to beg my dad to bid on it for me. Because <laughs> uh, it was like, you're a child, you cannot have an eBay account. <laughs> oh, stretch and crap goes the arm. And, uh, again, in Blue's Sod Law, desperately wanted the sequel, and then never finished the sequel. It's still on the shelf. So, if I can encourage the guys to play through it, and hopefully they like it, we can then play through the sequel together. Hey. And in the sequel, you get an Eevee as a starter. So, of course, I was the nerd who researched, like, which Pokemon you could get in the game. And, like, what moves you would get to work out which evolution was statistically the best to get. And I believe in that game, it was Jolteon was the best one to get. Which is hard by me, because I think Jolteon... Oh, excuse me. My favourite. I don't know where to go with this. Love the feel of going into my um, massive making D and D maps folders <laughs> and uh, opening my like I've got like a, just a folder full of zip files that I haven't un extracted and being like I need this and finding exactly a file named that. <laughs> Like, perfect! <laughs> Pass me thought of this. Okay, I need to listen to a different song, because I was like, oh, I want to listen to this song, and I've listened to it on loop for about an hour. That's how the hyperfixation be. I think most of the time I chose Jolteon in the original games, but I distinctly remember, um, I think I chose Vaporeon in yellow, because obviously I had my Pikachu on my team as the starter in yellow. So I think I went for Vaporeon. I'm the complete other end of this answer. I always evolve Eevee's into Flareon. Always Flareon, I know. I, I think I have probably chosen Flareon at one point, and then just because I thought it looked cool, and then I started to reach the point where I was like researching Pokemon, and then rapidly learned that Flareon was widely considered the worst. <laughs> Flareon sucks, yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one who loves Flareon. I, it looks cool, I like it, it's just very unfortunate that statistically and move-wise it, it, it was given the short end of the stick. To be fair, I say this, I do also like Umbreon. I very much I, like Umbreon. And now that I, I'm like older and I'm aware that the culture is there, <laughs> Flareon sucks, I feel like an obligation. <laughs> I'm like, no, I have to love Flareon if no one else will. I remember when they did um, uh, Twitch Plays Pokemon and they managed to get the Eevee and then it was like literally a conspiracy of like trying to not get the Eevee of Flareon. <laughs> And I hate Flareon's such a good egg. <laughs> it looks so sweet. <laughs> yeah. When second gen came around, I uh, like I like both Espeon and Umbreon, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I, I think 
in second gen I went for Umbreon, but I think I was happy with either. Saying this, I'm not much of a controversial opinion. Uh, Eevee's great, but I don't tend to have Eevees. Like, if I'm making a Pokemon team, it's very rare that I'm like, I'm gonna put an Eevee in here. Mm. No, I'd agree. Or like an Eevee. Yeah, I didn't didn't have, I think, yeah, basically yellow, I think I have Eevee with Vaporeon. But I don't think I really had it on my main team in Gold and Silver. And I don't think I really did at any point after that. I would always get them. And I'd probably pick one and like evolve it, but I don't think I'd ever put them on my main team. Mainly because in most Pokemon games, by the time I was given Eevee, I had my main team in concrete at that point. Mm, yeah. Oh my god, this texture's been made so that if you put them side by side, it lines up. Yes. Oh god, that was so satisfying. <laughs> that was so satisfying. <laughs> it just like it just like clicked. I was like, <gasps> be still in my heart. So I'm now trying to find the picture because I can't remember. Yeah, no, they. I think they did. I think in the original Twitch plays Pokemon. Uh, Saboteur successfully turned the Eevee into a Flareon <laughs> and everybody got very upset about it. <laughs> yeah, I think in my original uh, Pokemon Sun, not Ultra Sun, uh, in Sun I did uh, Doggo, Doggo playthrough. Because early on you could get Growlithe, which obviously I was super hyped about, and then there was uh, Rockruff. And I was like, oh, a rock type I actually like. Yeah, I remember you um, talking at the time about how you were like, a dog Doggo party is feasible. I was like, and I was like, it would, <laughs> maybe it's time for Doggo I, party. I, I was like, Doggo, the, see, Doggo party was always feasible, but I was like, now it can have good type coverage. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I mean. Because like ninety percent of doggos were fire types. <laughs> and I was like, now you can have good type coverage because you can have fire and rock and like obviously Eevee gives you a wide selection. There's mm -hmm. quite a few dark types, and I was like, oh, Doggo team, and then a uh, new new um Vulpix gave ice. Yeah. So, Even though Fox. Yeah Fox, but it was close enough. It was it was close enough for type coverage. <laughs> yeah. Hey congrats Naron. Ooh, very nice. Dan, you did that good. Naron is nothing if not efficient. <laughs> mm. I will at some point want to get Carpenter leveled up because uh, it is needed for a relic quest to get the Gable Glaive. Because apparently glaives are a carpenter's thing. <laughs> Don't look at me. Mm. Am I seriously gonna bother with this detail? Yes. Yes I am. So long since I played Sun, I'm trying to remember what my team was. Obviously Archer, the Arcanine, the 
the Ice Nine Tails, Lichen Rock, Big Magnetric, well, my electric type Magnetric. Did I have Absol or did I have my Tiena? I cannot remember. I cannot remember which I got. My Moon Team. I remember I had a Magna Zone because there's only one zone that, that you, you can evolve. get. Yeah. They have to be in a specific area to evolve. And it's in um, Pony Valley. Pony Valley. Right at the end. Yes, Magnetic Valley. Yeah. And I waited. <laughs> I waited for that shit. My moon team, I think, also more than most had more like Pokemon I had for a while and then left them. Yeah. Like I had a Gengar. I I normally have a Gengar for a while. Mm. Uh but I had a Salazzle for a while. <laughs> was a lot of that. Because uh, obviously then I eventually, I eventually got a... Did you give me my Nine Tails? You did, didn't you? I think I did because they were exclusive. I can't get it in Moon. They, yeah. were, they were exclusive, so yeah. yeah. I, had Tantler. I caught you one and sent you one, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't get that for ages. Yeah, because that's, uh, that's late in the game, that is. Late. Yeah. The thing I remember most about my Moon playthrough to be honest, was my Mudsdale, who I adored, and I cannot, for the life of me, um, play... I remember when I was trying to play Ultra Sun, I was like, I can't just... I can't do this without a Mudsdale. Because <laughs> I don't love ground and rock types, but I always need one, because I play fire types. <laughs> um, but Mudsdale was just like the best of both worlds for me. Also, that defense thing is fucking disgusting. Yeah, that's the thing about ground types and rock types, is they tend to be defensive. Yeah, I just I just loved the ha ha ha. You have hit me, you fool. <laughs> you should have killed me while you had the chance. <laughs> yeah, what did I have? Oh, obviously I had my wrestling boy and Brendan. In, what's the name of that cat again? Uh, the Incineroar line. Incineroar, yeah, yeah. Incineroar I had. Did I have a Lapras that run or was it a different run? My water types are always a bit of an adventure. Pokemon <laughs> has a lot um, of water types. <laughs> yeah. And I like very few of them. <laughs> I, but I have to have one because I. Fire See, I like the water starters, but for me, there's too, there's also too many that are just fish. <laughs> yeah, the like two water Pokemon I like a lot are basically the same, in that I like Lapras and I like Milotic. Fair, I like both of those. <laughs> Very similar design. There was a period around secondary school where I was playing Pokemon. This was like Game Boy Advance era with a friend a lot, and uh, we'd come to the conclusion that she was a grass trainer, and at the time I was a water trainer because I was always picking water starters. But I was like, okay. oh, I like Lapras, I like Milotic, I like Ga yeah. you know, Gyarados is cool. Uh, you know, for Alligators, my favorite starter. I like, you know, I, I like Swampert. I like em uh, Empoleon. So I was like, oh, I'm a water trainer, clearly. <laughs> For your third bir full bird evolution. <laughs> it's hard, hard to have flying types. Uh, I've always been the fire type person, even though hilariously I always gravitate towards ghost types. <laughs> Don't know what that says about me as a person. No one unpick that, please. <laughs> 
I do like fire types though. There's no pretending. Like I like fire types as well. Is the thing they are, they are like one of the cool types. Yeah, they're just cool. My problem is always that I want too many. I remember I had this problem in is is some of the one where they give you a Charizard? No, that's half half fire, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, no, it's X and X and Y, isn't it? X and Y. Yeah, yeah. X and Y. They get they uh, get and and if you I don't know if it was a code, so if you can still do it, or if it was like a limited time event thing. But I remember that you could get Torchic as well. Mm, so yes. It was like, so it was like within within the reach of the first gym, you could literally have your fire starter, a Charmander, and a Torchic. It was like yeah. about three fire types at the start of the game. I just remember, like, I always have a problem where I'm like, there's too many fire types in my party. <laughs> Every that was my thing with Salazzle. I worked so hard to get a Salazzle. Okay. So I spent literal days of my life getting a Salazzle. Yeah. Um, Poison fire, then, good combo, you know. Yeah, but I had a, I had Brendan. I had my Incineroar, and I had a Gengar. I was like, I don't need. I can't remember. No, it wasn't Gengar. I had. I had someone else that meant that I didn't need it. But like, I was like, I just don't. I just don't need. I. I there are other things that I need to go in this space. Oh, do you know why I? <laughs> why I stopped playing Ultra Sun is because I get to this point in every single Pokemon game where I get to I, either a. Uh, rock gym or an electric gym and yeah. I'm like maybe I'm dumb maybe I'm dumb uh, the electric gym in sun mm -hmm. I just remember uh, in moon sorry I just remember just dying for ever <laughs> just do, doing it over and over and over and I got to it in ultra sun I was like maybe I won't <laughs> Maybe I'll just stop playing I instead of grinding a grass type up from level four or whatever. Because uh, that's what always happens to me is I get to a gym that I just get my ass kicked and I'm like I'm gonna have to level something from like baby levels and I just don't want to. <laughs> but I, I will eventually just do it. But it's just getting to that point. <laughs> it's just making me do it. I got around this in one of them by having, uh, what should I call it? Gallade? No. What's the other one? Gallade's cool. I think uh, I think I had Gallade. What's the other the Gardevoir. other one? Guard of War. I had Gallade in my uh, Omega Ruby playthrough. It was a good Pokemon. I like Gallade. A lot of the Pokemon I like are similar, so I like Lapras and Milotic. I also really love Cresselia, and they have a visual similarity. I've um, got a shiny Cresselia. I've, I never caught one. I spent I, forever in Pearl trying to catch one. I yeah. couldn't it. I, 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 I think I have a, a Pearl, a, a Diamond, some Carter, some that has one, but uh, I have a, a shiny one that I caught on Pokemon Go, which I have, oh, which yeah, I yeah. have transferred over to my Switch. Because in a rare occurrence, I have two shiny Cresselias in Pokemon Go. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, I got two. So I, I've left one in Pokemon Go for my collection. Yeah. The other's been sent to the Switch. And I was just like, I am blessed mad, this day. Could, could I get that shiny Rayquaza? Fuck no. But I got the shiny Cresselia. Yeah. I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the same vein... I really love Gardevoir and Rose Raid. Rose Raid's a good one. Rose Raid was my f in my first Pearl team and was one of my favorite Pokemon for a really long time. It's a good Pokemon. And it's probably my favorite grass type. It's up there. Yeah, it, it is my favorite grass type. Yeah. Um, if there's an opportunity for me to have one, I will take it. <laughs> um, grass type is one of those ones where I struggle to pick a favorite because I'm like, they're all okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't love, love a lot it. of grass I types. I don't love grass types. No. I do quite like Go-Go. Go-Go surprised me in a lot yeah. of ways. Ex it's not just because it can fly. Yeah, It, learn it learns Aerial Ace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I will never forget that fight that we had. Yes. My goat, can, my goat can fly. Surprise, bitch, so, so can I. <laughs> 
I, me and you must have like independently of each other had the same moment where we went, wait, it learns Aerial Ace? Aerial Ace? I have to give it this. Oh, it has to have Aerial Ace. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, if a bug type tries to eat it, then it's got a type advantage. That just makes sense. It was kind of foolish for me to do that though, because the thing is with me, I'm a blue well knows and can exploit in me, is I don't know my Pokemon typing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, me giving my, my Pokemon a move that's not the type that it is, is kind of pointless, because I switch into that Pokemon for that type that it is. So if I, I can give um, my GoGo -Go Aerial Ace all I like, but when I switch into it and I need a Grass type move, <laughs> I'm going to be cursing myself. This is an asset I never thought I would use, but it's actually very useful. Oh yeah, here it is. Also, this is a good reminder for myself, because apparently I never actually transferred that other Cressilia. I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera. But you will see there is my, my collection of four Darkrai's and three Cressilias. Two. Fuck you! They're my like two favorite legendaries. Get out and of here. Two of those Chris uh, three Cressilias, Two of them are shiny. So one of those shinies, I'm planning on sending to my Switch, so I can have in Sword and Shield. And hopefully, Nintendo, I can have this shiny Cressilia in the Diamond and Pearl remakes. Though they'll, pro they'll probably do bullshit where they go, "Oh, you can't transfer a Pokemon over until you've beaten the Elite Four. <laughs> Probably, yeah. That, that actually sounds reasonable. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fair, but also, fuck you, I want to have Shiny Cressilia on my team. Shiny, shiny Gallade, he's not very strong. <laughs> I, I, Larton, I've seen it. I don't want to look at it again. <laughs> oh god, no. No, absolutely cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Profoundly cursed. Though. One of the most cursed images I've seen in a while. <laughs> yeah. Das, I never forget the day that I used surf on your grass, do you? <laughs> I remember that until the end of days. <laughs> Thank you, girls, enabled me to win that fight. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, what's, oh, what's that? You, you, what's that? You just took out the one thing that could defeat my Sylveon, so my Sylveon can now come <laughs> in and sweep your dragon team? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know a lot. <laughs> Things I forgot in that moment. The, the ground steel uh, is not very good against water. Other thing I forgot, that Surf does not care who is on your team. <laughs> surf does not care. Look, I will say, po one thing, Pokemon Go, this irritates me. When you, when you look at this and think, oh, you know, three Cressilia, two are shiny. That's pretty awesome. But then I scroll up, and you see all my legendaries, and you go, Oh, that's that's a lot of Suicunes, none of which are shiny. That's a lot of Entei, none of which are shiny. That's a lot of Raikou, none You've of which- You gotta have some losses, Blue. None of which are shiny. <laughs> take the L. <laughs> take the like... L here, you'll take it nowhere else. So I have got my I have got my rubber chicken Moltres. Pink. And other things that Blue says. Hey, you should be happy, because I have my shiny Fenner Zapdos. Hey! That you caught for me. I did catch that. That Coxcon. That Hence why it's named after Fenner. I did not realise it was a shiny until I gave you the phone back and you were like, it's a shiny? I was this like, is, is it? This is a shiny girl. <laughs> and then we got shiny... Technically, shiny. technically the first shiny Pokemon I've ever caught. <laughs> And it's on my game. <laughs> That's what it's on your, yeah. yeah. And my shiny Articuno Kirok, so I have one of the legendary birds each. Yeah. Because you, if if you're willing to like, if if you've been into Pokemon Go and have stayed into it, you realise that it rapidly became a case of saying you had a legendary was not bragging rights, as illustrated by my phone that I just scrolled through of like five million legendary Pokemon. <laughs> I have 120 legendary Pokemon on my Pokemon Go. I should send some of these to my Switch. <laughs> Curls, name that reference of Verizion named Aramis. Oh, she's thinking about it. She's 
thinking about it. It's right there. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. I can, I can, I can hear the Yosushi conversation. <laughs> I can't remember what we're talking about. A, Ver a Verizion named Aramis. It's not one of your like gods or your NPCs, is it? No, here's, here's a hint. It's to do with the Pokemon. It's to do with it. It's to do with the Pokemon. Oh, good night, Des. I hope your head feels better in the morning. Night, friend. No, it's it's a scammy. Verizion is one of the Swords of Justice Pokemon named after the. Go on. No, it's not there. <laughs> I just know I'm going to be angry about it. <laughs> I don't also don't want to tell you that. <laughs> It's not just Artemis, is it? No, it's not Artemis, no. Okay, good. I don't- I don't- it's gone. It's not there. No? Nope. You must What is happening? It's Musketeers. Oh, yeah, of course it's it is. I did know that. I know you know that. I could see in your eyes that you knew that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aramis. Yeah, it's there now. Oh fuck, I could reread the shit out of that book right now. That's what those Pokemon are based off. The yeah, I remember because we had a conversation about D'Artagnan. Yeah. Keldeo D'Artagnan. Yeah. So I have a Verizion, which is based off Aramis, so I named it after it. I could read the shit out of the three Musketeers right now. Okay, last Pokemon. World Serpent, Jomanganda, Garatina. Yeah. Close the Pokemon Go now. Close it. Go back to art. <sighs> How's the dice going, Martin? I'm very curious to know how your dice experiments are going. As someone who has also made dice. Just found a folder in my map assets that's just full of fungus assets. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's just a bunch of cute little mushrooms. And tree roots. I literally went looking for a water asset and went straight into the folder titled Nature Brackets Not Water. Good job, self. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. You do have to leave it to cure for a few days. Fingers crossed on the bubbles, because I've had a few ones where I've looked at it and I've like, I've tried so hard not to get bubbles in these, and then when I come back after they've cured, take them out of the mould. Bubble. And I'm like... Pfft. What a specific thing to search for. I just named a layer. <gasps> Look out, everybody. <laughs> it finally happened. I'm still on one layer. I haven't, made, I haven't had an additional layer all stream. When you're pasting uh, just a bunch of things onto a <laughs> onto one canvas, you end up with a lot of layers very yeah. quickly. <laughs> listen to. I generally put on MCR or Fall Out Boy compilation albums. Today is a okay. Fall Out Boy compilation album kind of day. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Hmm? Latin. It's, it's, it's only cute if it's metaphorical. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Your vision, so limited. 
No, I'm just squeamish. <laughs> <laughs> Time. I think it's time. I think it's Tonga time. Part of me is tempted to make this stream a little shorter. Fine with me. I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily tired, but I think like mentally you're tuned out. Yeah, I'm like reaching the point where it's like this sketch is kind of done, but I don't feel in the nine set to try lining it. Yeah, so I'm now I get just, that. I'm now just kind of fidgeting. So I definitely I'm, feel that. So I may call the stream at 11. Have yeah, an early night. Because Spook's already gone to bed as well. Which I mean. obviously is always quite tempting to... I need to put these biscuits back. I got biscuits out to nibble on. <laughs> I actually haven't nibbled on them. <gasps> Are you feeling alright? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely shouldn't. I bet definitely shouldn't force myself to eat this pile of biscuits. <laughs> nope. Because then I would definitely feel unwell. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing shading, even though I haven't finished the map yet. <laughs> Stop it. It just makes it look better, so much quicker. <laughs> Step it. Get some help. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, Lon. <laughs> I have heard many things about your sweet druid boy. Mostly from you. Mm -hmm. That can't be helped. Wait, how does shading work? <laughs> how would the shadow function? Who knows? Who knows? Certainly not me. Who decides? Who decides? <laughs> See, this is the thing, Lawson, because I. Where's that from? Uh huh? Sorry, I made a reference and I'm trying to watch out where it's from. That's the thing, Larson, is I, I tend to play, like, good aligned characters, which then immediately doesn't mesh well with people who are playing weird-ass characters, because if they do stuff like that, <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a fun character quirk, haha, and I'm like, oh, my characters just won't let you do that. <laughs> and I feel so bad because I don't want to be the person who's, like, ruining your fun. It's like, oh, my, my character just goes and steals from this guy. And I'm like, you realise, like, my paladins can stop you, right? Oh, damn it, will be funny. I'm sorry, I'm playing a lawful good paladin. She's gonna stop you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shout out to this map that just gave me a one-on-one on, one on 101 on shading very quickly. <laughs> Shadow and it made it look raised, and I was like, I functionally knew that worked, but I just watched it happen. <laughs> Most of my understanding of shading comes from when I used to do makeup a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because a lot of like, you know, everything from contouring to costume makeup is like when you get a, a light and a shadow, you make a point, right? You make a, a raised section. <laughs> so I, I, my brain still uses all of because that's how shading works. <laughs> but I learned it from doing costume makeup. <laughs> I play a lot of chaotic good. <laughs> yeah, chaotic good's pretty forgiving. Because mm. it's like... Um, you still get the... The like... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to think and shade it sometimes. Uh, like the, hey, that's bad, don't do that stuff. But you can sometimes be like, eh, I'm just gonna let this play out. Mm -hmm. 
I had that with Glory all the time. <laughs> I think that's why now I try to play chaotic good, but I do have a couple of characters that are at least neutral. Yeah. Because I, play, I played Lawful once, and well, well, I, I well, I had fun playing the character. I felt bad because quite often I would have to be the well, I'm Lawful good, so I'm going to stop you doing that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I feel it, like to some shitty. extent I should play a Lawful good just to do it. But at the same time, I just think I wouldn't be very good at it. It would depend on the party and the players. Yeah. Like, I think I could play Lawful Good with you guys. <laughs> yeah. I think I could play Lawful Good with you guys, and yeah. it would probably be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it you know, pro it would probably be one of those things where I say at the get-go, I'm playing Lawful Good character. Yeah. Because it's, you know, like, I don't, like, we, I don't think we could really have... It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> It's a tough one because if your if your whole party goes like weird and chaotic, and you're just the one who isn't, it's yeah. really rough. If you're just the one person going, don't, no, that's bad. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Whereas, if, like, if you've got like a, I'm I'm thinking of like the Pride Princess party. We've got a pretty big range of like levels of lawful <laughs> to chaotic. Um, that you can kind of, you know, we have a really hyper lawful player and we have some more chaotic players and it kind of does okay. Because mm -hmm. I think because there's just such a range. I think if you're just like the only one on yeah. either end, if you're like the the lawful one or the chaotic one, you're going to be a pain. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why I tend to settle into neutral good by default. Yeah. I, I Generally, settle I want to... to do good. I like to play good people. Yeah, me too. I, uh... I... Saying I settle into um, true neutrals a bit misleading, because even my true neutrals have a... You know, Marin was true neutral, but swinging a little evil. Mm -hmm. And I've, I have other true neutrals who swing more good because it's more about where their focus is. Because um, that's the way I think about it for some goddamn reason. Uh, but gen yeah, generally I play... Generally I play good people. Notable exceptions. I definitely... Oh, yeah, I have I think as well. We've talked about this before, but I, I tend to think of it as more just, like, selfish. <laughs> selfish, selfless spectrum. More than good and evil. You know, are they willing to put themselves above the law, the well-being of others, etc.? And that's how I judge. This is unnecessary detail, but it looks really cool. 
I'm pretty proud of this for a very simple thing. Hey, take pride in what you do. Very simple little thing, but I like it. I need to change the vibe, but that's pretty easy to fix. <laughs> on the on the scale of things, vibe is pretty easy to manage. Not a vibe. That's better. She's pleased. I could go a step further with this, but I'm not going to. Just, just a little fail. This is more of a fail safe, to be fair. Yeah. What I'm doing right now. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of fail safes in action at the moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. You guys are doing what you gotta do. Where's my complete map spot? Oh my god, please do not crash. I tried to save it and it just like did oh, that I thing, the that. Windows thing. I hate that so much. I was like, no. <laughs> I just said I was happy with do, this. Do not crash as I press the save button. <sighs> right, let's see if it uploads. Oh yeah, Kels, there was a thing that like I was gonna pick your brain about. Now it's like the end, it's now it's like the end of the, sh the stream, so I probably shouldn't. It's up to you. I don't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it and maybe we can have a think about it. Like you don't have to answer, which is <laughs> something that I've, I think I've mentioned before to like just a few people in the fact of when making homebrew stats for my monsters. There's a <laughs> million guides out there on doing stats and balancing things like that, but I can find nothing <laughs> about writing. Lawful. So, right. at, so as resident writing person, having <laughs> oh, no. having read the monster manual, mm -hmm. or maybe like this week, if you go back and have a look at the monster manual, aren't there any sort of like themes or patterns of things like that you've noticed? Because hmm. I want to try writing like the law bit. I have the stats, I want to write the law bit, and I literally don't know where to start. Don't hmm. know what to, I don't know what to do. I, know, I can see that they're broken down into like paragraphs of information and they have like a heading that vaguely references what it is, like you know, gargoyle that says like earth the origin, and then it's a paragraph about how they originate from the earth plane, for example. Mm -hmm. But like... Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about it because there's literally nothing online. There's no guides or anything or tips. Well, is there any time you Google monster writing a monster, you just get information about stats. Done the stats. Yeah, done that bit. I need the law. Yeah. I need the law bit. <laughs> it depends. The way I think I would approach this, and the way I think you will enjoy approaching it, I think are different. Because if I'm making a creature from nothing mm -hmm. i'll approach it with normally some combination of like folktale or story mm -hmm. you know i i will approach it as you know how does this what is the perception of this thing mm -hmm. i think though you will probably get more of a kick and i think probably more consistently with monster manual is almost a biologist approach which is what's environment it's habitats yes it's habits sorry yeah um, yeah. And uh because that's kind of what the law the law stuff is for the monster manual is it's an instruction yeah. on it's an instruction on how to play the monster. It's like where you find it and how it behaves. I would I really recommend I would recommend this for other people who are watching. Um it might be useful. You might know about this website already, but there's a website called The Monsters Know What They're Doing. I don't. And it's literally, it's, oh my god, this is one of my, like, DM tricks, back pocket tricks. 
uh, that I have relied on for a while, which is basically a, literally the whole website. I think they also have a book, but I use the website. Um, is they go through the monster manual and they break down with how what abilities they have, how they would behave. Okay. So if it's a monster that's got really low HP, high dex, it's like, well, how much int does it have? Is it is its instinct going to be to hide and make surprise adventurers? Is its instinct going to be, you know, how aware is it going to be of its own need to survive? How brainless is it? And some of them are like, you know, with more... Monsters have weird abilities that tend to be why I go there. It's like, how do you even use this? <laughs> um, but approaching it from that kind of way of going well, it has these abilities and these stats, you've got that sorted. Yeah. Being like, okay, well then how does it, what do these stats imply about how it behaves? And then work backwards from there. Okay. If it behave, if it likes to hide, if it's got like good decks, maybe it likes to hide. And then in which case, does it burrow? Does it live in caves? Like where does it, you know, where does it hide from there? Okay. And work that way. And then you can get into fun folklore stuff if you want. <laughs> But the creatures I have in mind, they thankfully come with their own folklore. Yes, I figured. <laughs> you know which ones, which creatures I'm referring to. Yes, I know. I know what you're talking about. But yeah, I think approach it, approach it the same way you unpack a monster hunter monster. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I guess my problem is that because I'm, I, I even though I've done like a little bit of story writing, I still don't consider myself much of a writer. So I'm worried about literally the, the, that's the a, writing that's a part. One to, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. If you if you have done writing, you're a writer. Congrats, you've done it. <laughs> yeah, but I've, ne I've never done this kind of writing. I suppose is my no. It's a, yeah, it's a new. It's a new medium. And that you'll find different examples of it from like the Monster Manual to like Xanathar's <laughs> or like Volos. Mm. Volos is like a really in-depth look. <laughs> At a couple of them, but like beholders and beholders, isn't it? Um, it's like let's unpack everything about his lair and what kind of things they collect and whatever. And you can go into that much detail if you want, but yeah. really, you just need those. I'm thinking of a monster that I've been looking at in the monster manual for. I've been staring at it for the last week and a half, Oops. and literally the, <laughs> the the block on it is like where they tend to live, how they tend to. So, like, are they smart? Do they care about talking? <laughs> um, and if they've got any, like, peculiarities. Okay. So, like, uh, you know, I don't know, does a monster seek out certain things? Does it collect shit? Does it hoard? You know, and um, what does it hoard? All these things. All these things. Okay. And it might be that there's really not that much you know if it's if it's a relatively simple monster there might only be like one or two things but it all depend that's how I'd approach it anyway okay. you need to have a think about it I guess yeah yeah and there's no wrong way <laughs> to go nuts because <laughs> the thing is even if you come up with like way too much stuff you can pare it down yeah <laughs> I may I may end up like Coming, coming My at, I, I may end up coming at you one day and you'll find yourself being suddenly pseudo employed as a co-writer of just like, I don't know if this is but good <laughs> Pick me up one day I'll load Final Fantasy XIV and do inventory management and you can just talk at me as much as you want Fair enough <laughs> the thing And I will is, comment like... when needed You will probably talk it out yourself Yeah. It, I, th I, I, I know I've... you well enough to know you will solve this problem Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know myself from going through university and Spook, yeah. Spook would vouch for this as he likes to say I basically wrote your, your final assignment and that's because no you I dictated my final <laughs> yeah. assignment to you because me sat at a computer yeah. for three hours drove me crazy but me pacing my bedroom and talking for three hours I could do yep. we this was literally how the flat got through their dissertation yeah. <laughs> is eventually someone would get angry someone would be cooking and while they like, while I'm sat there chopping an onion, I'm like, okay, explain uh, genotherapy to me. <laughs> <laughs> and they would just go. It's 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 the it's the rubber duck. Fallacy, it's rubber duck. It? It's rubber duck. It's just rubber ducks. Yep. Uh... I'm up for it. I'm always up to rubber duck.
I haven't really, because I've been I've been focusing so much on my D and D maps. That I haven't really said yet, but I really fucking love this thing you're doing. Thank you. I love the just the. I can do it. Think of the words. <laughs> the way it flows. The composition. That's a word. Yes, composition is a word, but fl flow is okay. also appropriate. Okay. Cool. Cool. It was, it was, it has it was somewhat lines. Yeah, somewhat represented <laughs> by the, the warm-up sketches that I was doing, where I was basically doing swoosh, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. you know, let's get, a a, let's, let's get a person out of this this swoosh, <laughs> is was what I was doing in a, in, a war, in my warm-up. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, you know, the swoosh has turned into a line, it has motion to it. So, yeah. a, another instance of where I kind of had an idea so I did my warm up accordingly. Yeah. But yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yes. Um, even though nobody asked, uh, yes, this is in fact my rendition of what Kika keeps referring to as sky dancing. Hey! I rewatched that clip the other day. My heart. <laughs> I can't believe that happened, boy. <laughs> I just watched it back and just the. We were all so busy laughing at Nightland. We were so busy laughing at Stacey rolling a one that we didn't even catch that I rolled the 20. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I was laughing at both. The fact, the fact that you simultaneously did both. Oh my god. The dice have an agenda. They do. They really do. <sighs> yeah. It's another one of the I'm things where I felt bad. Or, uh, it, it didn't happen on the, the thing, but I felt bad when we came into the chat like the day after and Dust was like, Oh my god, Blue! This is the second time there's been a sky dance, and I was like, "That that wasn't a sky dance. That's not nope. what that. That's not what that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 not what that is." It's, it's we were that was dancing in the moonlight. <laughs> yeah, that was as I said. I was like, "That was dancing in the sky," but it's not a sky this dance. Is sky dance. <laughs> this is sky dance. Sky dance is is an Arakocra thing slash genie thing because they can also mm -hmm. fly. <laughs> yeah. The key, the key thing is the flight part. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta fly to do it. <laughs> Look, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm not working on it. That's what Kiki keeps saying to Lo, is like, oh yeah, we can totally do it over a body yeah. of water. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said this to Das, but I don't think I said it to any of you. It's very, very funny trying to play a character who likes being high up when you are terrified of heights. Oh, I'm sorry, but... No, why are you apologizing? I mean, I'm, like, I'm I like heights as well, but it is very much a yeah. physical thing. Like I love, yeah. I love views and cloud, and obviously clouds and birds and stuff. It's only literally, it's more vertigo, I think, is more than anything. Yeah, literally being on the edge of a balcony is what yeah. gives me the sort of ugh, feeling. It's like I was playing Posey and I was like thinking of like all the shit that she could probably see from how high up they were. And I was like, Posey will fucking love this. Makes me want to vomit. Because <laughs> I'm really sensitive to eyes. Oh. Really sensitive to it. But it's, it's funny. Hi, Peso. You will once again have got him right at the end. Why do you always turn up at like 11 o'clock at night, dude? It's midnight where you are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I am... Uh, it's just a very funny thing that I've somehow ended up. Posey and I are kind of opposites mm -hmm. in that way. Posey does not like being inside, <laughs> and she likes like stuff like that. I am the opposite. Mm -hmm. I want to be inside, and also not very high up from the ground. <laughs> Dwarf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> Open water, that's pretty common. Oof, yeah. I was raised on the coast, so I do not have that. Fair enough. Uh, water's never been a big thing for me, because I, I guess because I was like taught to swim at a very young age. Mm. And I was always like playing in the sea and stuff. But again, I, I, suppose, I, suppose, I suppose I've never really been in open water, because I've never been on a cruise or anything. Yeah, no. So, no. I don't know how I would react if I was actually out there, but, you know, I've swam in the sea and been fine with it. I've swam in rivers. Yeah, me too. Admittedly, I rem remember once seeing... I didn't. I wasn't even watching the film, my mum and dad were watching the film, and I was, like, passing through the <laughs> living room. And it was... It was, um... 
the film about I can't remember the name of it, but it was about a cruise ship that capsizes. Oh, yeah. And the entire well, thing. Not and, to I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, and the entire thing was upside down, and then it was like about that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's terrifying. But yeah, uh, yeah, I remember seeing glimpses. Those are the separate things for me. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I was like, oh god, that's awful. But literally, as I was walking through, there was a scene where like p people in the ballroom or whatever. Basically, it was like you know everybody was. That's Titanic. You're thinking of Titanic. It wasn't Titanic. It wasn't Titanic. <laughs> it was a more it was a more modern one because pe okay. because the ship didn't break. It was literally mm. been hit by a wave, perfectly capsized, and was just out in the ocean, upside down. Yeah. And like the the idea of the story was that people were trying to climb up to the engines to get out through the bottom of the boat. Yeah. Um. But like people like. That's what also said in this. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. But there was this scene that was like in a really fancy ballroom, where all mm -hmm. these people were dressed up, and I just remember there was this moment, and it's always stuck with me, where this woman, like, is with this guy. Maybe it was Poseidon. I don't know. But she like she like she like she like looked at him, and it really struck me because there was no words in the scene. She like yeah. lo she looked at the windows, which just creaked, and she just yeah. looks at the man that she's with, and yeah. like the pair of them just slowly extend hand to each other, and then the windows break in. Yeah. And and it really that moment really shook me as a kid, and yeah. I was just like, yeah. I cannot imagine a worse feeling than knowing you are about to drown. Yeah. So, Yikes! Yeah, it, it literally. I, it's a nice cheery note to end the stream on. I know. I, I blame you for talking about fears. I was like, no, I've never. I, that was the. That was like the only time that There's a, water's ever been frightening. That water has ever ever frightened me. <laughs> Bring it back round. Oka, I'm certainly working on it. <laughs> Supposedly peaceful, according to who? <laughs> what is the source? <laughs> I require sources. Where are you please. getting your information from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, no, I mean, I mean, I mean be, being afraid. I thought it creeped me out as yeah. a kid. Like, I mean, being afraid I'm, of I'm... death is a very natural thing. Like, oh, it's it's you know it's literally your instinct to be afraid of death because you want to survive. But yeah, in that moment, I was like, I literally couldn't think of anything worse than just basically seeing your death approach. Ooh. Nah. <laughs> yeah. no, no, again, nice cherry note to end the stream. I mean, it's it's weird because, like I said, I'm kind of, of I guess I'm a little afraid of heights. Like, I'm getting, you know. But 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 if you couldn't tell from all of my bird characters and winged characters, I dream, yeah, I dream you're of flying. Like I dream of flying. Yeah. So I guess you know, scared of falling, but dream of flying. No psychologists unpack that. <laughs> no, I feel like I should also point out that I have multiple characters that are obsessed with the ocean. <laughs> well, again, it's where you were, where you were raised, so. <laughs> uh, it's funny how it works out. <laughs> uh, it's funny how these things manifest, isn't it? <laughs> I think part of it with Posey is just like the. I'm gonna make a character that's different, <laughs> you know. So in that case, you know, of the traits that got randomized, yeah. I suddenly somehow ended up with a character who has the opposite way round in uh, comfort zones to me. I mean, I had the benefit really with Kika is that ninety percent of my character creation was done for me. Because yeah, make it making the child of two of my other characters, these two obviously that I'm drawing. Hey. It's like I have I know both of their parents and I have roleplayed both of their parents and now I'm making their child. So I was like, yeah. you know, this this is just a what distills from this two, yeah. yeah. This is literally just a maths equation of this plus this equals this. <laughs> you know, it's like what what do these two people make and what does their lifestyle create in terms of a personality and upbringing? <laughs> yeah. Which is, we've discovered the answer is anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, that was what I came—the conclusion I came to. 
I was like, wow, mega yep. mega famous heroes for parents. That's... Who are very oh. overprotective. Yeah, very overprotective. <laughs> no... And all their friends are overprotective. It definitely makes anxiety. At least Kay yeah. is somewhat alright. <laughs> Kaok's doing okay. He's doing okay. <laughs> not, but he's doing okay. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's doing okay, but he has his own reasons. Kaok is another. That's the funny thing is that because now he's now not with the party, he's like you know sort of you know out of sight, out of mind. But Kaok has his own stuff. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm playing Kika, but I made both of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As po yeah. as Posey yeah. started to unearth. When I was like, you know, I'm just, yes. I'm just gonna drop this little bit of lore. Adopted. There you go. Live, live footage of of me getting real life stunned. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that, and I didn't suspect it either. No, nobody did, and I don't think anybody like, suspected what? it either. What? That's why I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do this now because it seems like it's an appropriate time to drop yeah. it. So I was like, and it was just like so casually, like it doesn't mean anything to. You know, when the, the conversation they were having about family, yeah. like that was the logical place that it would go. Yeah. It was well. information for me out of character. Yeah. Posey was just like, oh, okay. But... Yeah, well, that was literally what the conversation was about. Kika was like, oh, you want to know about my family? I was like, well, Kayux my family, but since you want to know the details, then I'll give you the details. Kayux adopted. Yeah. He's still my brother. Yeah. That doesn't that doesn't change anything. That doesn't mean anything, yeah. But because you wanted to know. Oh, yeah. Here's the information for you. Posey was just confused. She often is. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many family. Yes. I'm trying to but work poor, it out. Yeah. Bless Kika and her Posey. very confusing <laughs> categorization. <laughs> It's, it's it's so funny because again I am a character completely like I can see the Matrix because I was there yeah. when it developed. Um, but Posey. Say, what can I say? Who has never encountered that kind of uh, structure, like <laughs> like family structure? Yeah. Was is just confused as hell. Yeah. Well, Posey's okay. like when my character was what? made, I was like, you know, child of Kirok, and I was like, well, Kirok was just, you know, really friendly with everyone, and by the end of it, did literally consider them their family, and I was like, well, yeah. Hika would literally be raised it the same. Sense. It li yeah. literally has just been raised with this mentality of, are you close with someone? They are your family. Family now. <laughs> is it family is f family and blood literally are two totally different things to her. The word family does so not... many things I want to say, but yeah. look into my eyes. There's so many things I want to say. Yeah. Tiki, Tiki, family does not it mean the word family does not mean a blood relation. It literally is not what that word means. Yeah, no. <sighs> so many things. <laughs> Wait, we were going to wrap this up half an hour ago. Yeah, I've managed to pull out another half hour. Uh, Bessie, okay. we can totally do some practice, maybe even tomorrow? I don't know if you're, like, in work tomorrow or not, but I think I'll be relatively free, I think. Yeah, we don't have D&D tomorrow. Yeah, don't have D&D. So, I'd probably be playing Final Fantasy. So, could totally do a little bit of roleplay practice if you want to practice your character. That's fine. Fair enough. No reason. But yeah, we will leave this here, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll leave this here. I've got this lovely little picture. Yee. I've done a bunch of stuff that I can't show you. <laughs> You'll find out, yep. maybe, <laughs> depending. Uh, uh, but yeah, we're gonna head off. We're gonna head off. Yeah. So. No no D&D &D tomorrow. No D&D &D tomorrow, unfortunately, so ignore the schedule. Um, so we'll catch you next Art stream week. next week might be a question mark for me. Oh. oh. But obviously not for you. So even if I can't make it, I imagine you could I mean, it. if you can't make it, I, I don't know. I guess maybe I'll see if I well, can get a guest, perhaps? I will be I don't want to do it on my own. Oh, I don't want to do it on my own, because that's not... I would be able to tell you... I'll be able to tell you by about midday okay. <laughs> whether or not I can do it. Okay. So, art stream should be happening, but yeah. I guess maybe we'll weather 
pearls will be here or someone else will be here is the question. The question. Let's be real. So hopefully, if everything goes well, it will be me. I hope it, I hope it is you, because I enjoy doing art. Shows. <laughs> it's like, wow. Everything goes according to plan. We're now in February, so that's... Is that... Is that how long is that? Is that October? We started in uh, October. November, that's December, January. We've never missed a week. We haven't missed a week for four months. Dang. Street. Can't break the street. <laughs> gotta gotta do it. Right. Good night, yep. Bessa. It's nice to see you, even though you always turn up at the end. <laughs> but it's right, nice to off. hear from you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.